Bookmark this website in read.com to update the latest novels. Chapter 3981, The Caring Mother's Sword, When the Sharp Sword Kai Shot Out, It Suffocated the Three of Them. Out of reflex, Long Chen was about to attack, but Yu Kaingsu simply grabbed his arm and dragged him back. We just need to watch, said Yu Kaingsu. Sensing the familiar aura, Ju Yifen reacted quickly and summoned a saber in his hand. With a powerful swing, sparks ignited and illuminated the surroundings. However, the force behind the attack was overwhelming, causing Ju Yifen to be sent flying out of the gate like a tumbleweed, unable to withstand the attack. Unfilial son, your progress is too slow. As this cold shout rang out, a woman holding a sword shot toward Zhu Yifen like a wild tempest. What is going on? Long Chen was dumbfounded. What else? It's a mere disappointment. This fellow has always been lazy and doesn't work hard enough. Thus, he can't reach satisfactory marks in any area. It would be strange if his mother didn't get angry with him, said Yu Kaiang Su calmly, indifferent in the face of this strange scene. She just watched indifferently as Zhu Yifen wept and fled miserably. Long Chen directly understood. No wonder Zhu Yifen had wanted the two of them to accompany him. It seemed they were there to boost his courage, as well as help plead for mercy in a bit. On the other hand, Zhu Yifen's mother attacked ruthlessly, her sword dancing. Zhu Yifen was forced back repeatedly, unable to even retaliate. Long Chen couldn't help but sigh, a caring mother's sword leaves the child bloody as she tries to carve out his potential. Shut up! Zhu Yifeng's mother suddenly shouted. Following that, Zhu Yifeng screamed and was sent flying. Although dozens of wounds were present on his body, and fresh blood was pouring out, Zhu Yifeng's mother had definitely shown mercy. But even with that mercy, Zhu Yifeng still looked quite frightening with blood soaking his clothes. Zhu Yifeng just stabilized himself and didn't dare to speak, his head lowered. He seemed completely terrified of this mother of his. I was the one who gave birth to him, so I'll discipline him as I please. Do I need you to interfere? Zhu Yifeng's mother glared at Long Chen. She looked to be in her thirties and appeared extremely formidable. With her battle robes, she looked very heroic. Even if you didn't give birth to him and just found him in the wild, would it be all right for you to beat him like that? Just because you bestowed him with life doesn't mean that you have the right to kill him, no, said Long Chen a bit helplessly. Who are you? Ju Yifeng's mother examined Long Chen. Only now did she realize that she didn't recognize him. He is my big brother. My big brother is amazing, and with him protecting me, I don't need to worry about anyone bullying me, declared Yu Yifen bravely as he hid behind Long Chen's back. Big brother? You are a prince, but you accepted an outsider as your big brother. Do you not care about your future any more? Mom, don't call me mom. Call her big sister, then, said Long Chen speechlessly. Big sister, I'll kill you, you little brat. Zhu Yifeng's mother hadn't expected Zhu Yifeng to really call her that, so she raised her hand to slap him. Senior, why do this? Long Chen hastily got in the way. He couldn't just let Zhu Yifeng be beaten. After all, he was his brother-in-law. Why? He refuses to properly cultivate wasting his youth. Rather than improving himself, he wastes his time on worthless activities. Just look at Kainksu. She works so hard. Then, look at yourself. You're practically a spineless coward in comparison, raged Zhu Yifin's mother. Well, you can't blame Yifin for that. Perhaps it's hereditary, said Long Chen with a smile. Are you saying that His Majesty isn't strong enough demanded Zhu Yifeng's mother coldly. Perhaps he takes after you. Long Chen smiled. Yug, it's just a joke. 
yeah, I think might just be a case of a tree taking a long time to spread roots before growing. No one can see the future. Perhaps Yaifeng will suddenly soar soon, said Long Chen. Exactly. Perhaps I'm only weak because my chance hasn't come yet. With Long Chen speaking up for him, Zhu Yaifeng's guts grew. Is this your excuse for being lazy? Senior, please calm yourself. Yaifeng is not wrong. An expert becomes an expert because they have a reason to become strong. Beating him like this is not a way to force it. You can drive him for a while, but not for a lifetime. In the end, your own path must be walked by yourself. In the end, the bitter wine that you brewed will be drunk by yourself. Every person has their own destiny and opportunities. You say that he refuses to improve himself, and you are comparing him to the other outstanding princes and princesses. Then can't he compare you to the two empresses, or perhaps experts above heaven venerates? If you were strong enough, would he still need to work hard on cultivation? So we shouldn't just judge people based on our own viewpoint, don't you think? Everyone's goals and targets are different. It's very difficult to say who is right or wrong, advised Long Chen. Zhu Yaifeng's mother was left silent as she pondered this. She hadn't expected Long Chen to be capable of saying such a thing. Thinking about it, in all these years, she had been the one forcing Zhu Yaifeng. But if Zhu Yaifeng wasn't outstanding enough, wasn't it because his mother wasn't that outstanding either? When she reached that point in her thoughts, a great deal of her anger faded. Come here. Hearing this, Zhu Yaifen jumped in fright. He thought that his mother was going to beat him again, but he also didn't dare to disobey. He just prepared himself and walked over. In the past, upon witnessing her son's frightened demeanor, Zhu Yaifeng's mother would have grown even angrier. However, now she realized something, so she spoke in a gentle tone. Come, your mother has prepared new ceremonial robes for you. Your mom personally made them. Indeed, you are my son, not a tool I use to achieve my dreams and compete with others. In truth, you have always been more important than my own life. I won't force you any more in read. Kam Zhu Yaifeng's mother then helped Zhu Yaifeng switch out his robes. Having never heard such kind words from his mother in his entire life, Zhu Yaifeng couldn't help but cry. Mom, Zhu Yaifeng looked at his mother emotionally. Ever since he was an adult, the distance between them had only grown. It was to the extent that his fear of her grew greater than his love, and calling her bragged his emotions out. Good child, don't cry. The banquet will start soon. Tidy yourself up or your imperial father won't be happy. Zhu Yaifeng's mother wiped away his tears and comforted him, adjusting his robes. Seeing her act like this, Yu Kaiyingsu had a blank expression. She seemed lost in some distant memories. Don't worry, since Yaifeng calls me big brother, I won't mistreat him. He will grow up nicely, promised Long Chen. Zhu Yaifeng's mother was about to speak when a bell suddenly rang. Hurry, the feast is about to start. In read, Com Chapter 3982, Taking Advantage of Weakness, the banquet hall was located in a side palace. But although it was just a side palace, it was still extravagant and glorious. A line of beautiful imperial attendants was in charge of receiving guests and bringing them to their seats. Long Chen saw many figures wearing different kinds of robes at the gate. There are this many foreign diplomats today. Heavenly ruler seal, violet lightning, eastern brilliance, feather cry. These are all enemy nations. All of them have been hostile toward us lately. Yu Kaiyingsu's expression changed when she saw all these people. Long Chen had heard of the heavenly ruler seal and violet lightning empires, but not the rest. According to the Empire's customs, it was the diplomatic emissaries that were first let in. In other words, the guests were seated before the host. Yu Kaiyingsu then counted. 
there were eight diplomatic emissaries from unfriendly nations, so this banquet was not going to be fun. When the time came, Long Chen spotted the crown prince, Zhu Yunwen, as well. The latter merely glanced coldly at Long Chen for a moment before turning away. He didn't say anything, but Long Chen saw the hint of fear he concealed. Clearly, the matter of him possessing 537 dragon power had reached Zhu Yunwen's ears. As a result, none of the princes dared to underestimate Long Chen any longer. It was unknown if it was because of Long Chen, but quite a few imperial disciples somehow chose to strike up a conversation with Yu Kaingsu at this time. Although they weren't qualified to actually enter the banquet hall, they did have seats just outside the hall. When it came time for the princes and princesses to enter, Long Chen followed Yu Kaingsu inside. To his surprise, Yu Zioyan, the empresses, and a few imperial concubines had arrived in advance. When Long Chen entered, Jiang Huixin and Zhu Langxin smiled and nodded slightly at him. It could count as a greeting. Long Chen. Long Chen had just walked in when a furious voice rang out. Thus, Long Chen looked over to the source of the voice and exclaimed, Wow, the benefactor of my wealth! You already gave me the wild blade and the lightning tower in the three thousand worlds. Brother, what gift have you brought me this time? This person was precisely the violet thunderclap empire's Wang Tanyao. His lightning tower and wild blade were taken by Lei Linger, which was his life's greatest humiliation. Thus, for Long Chen to immediately bring it up caused his expression to twist with fury. Hey, what's with that look? This is a state banquet, so take note of your decorum. Just look at your face. It's as wrinkled as the crotch of some pants. But are you constipated? Long Chen directly threw more oil on the fire when he saw Wang Tanyao's furious expression. Wang Tanyao was about to explode in fury when an elder beside him stopped him. Yao Er, don't be rude. This elder was lean, and his face was covered in black spots, looking ordinary. However, there was lightning in his eyes when they opened and closed, and there seemed to be countless stars in the depths of his pupils. As for the spots on his face, they were not ordinary spots from old age, but countless runes that had condensed into spots. Although they looked dark and gloomy, they possessed immense power. This was definitely a terrifying expert. Just from Wing Tianyao's respectful appearance, it was clear that this elder's status was not ordinary. However, Long Chen didn't care about his status because he already spotted Yu Qingxuan in the distance. The banquet hall's tables were all rectangular and around four feet in width, arranged to accommodate two individuals per table. At the very front of it was the table for the emperor and the imperial concubines, and next to them would be the tables for the princes and princesses. As for Yu Qingxuan's position, it was close to the concubines. Furthermore, she wasn't together with the princes and princesses. For her to be seated with the imperial consorts, her position was clearly higher than the others of her generation. Also, within this entire hall, there were only two tables set up for a single person. One was the Emperor Yu Zioyan, while the other was for a stiff white-haired elder. This elder possessed a sturdy and robust physique, contrasting with his razor-sharp tongue. However, his overall appearance was peculiar and bordering on comical, leaving a distinct impression on those who saw him. When Long Chen saw Yu Qingxuan, his eyes brightened, and without a word, he started walking toward her. Hey, Long Chen, your seat is here. Seeing Long Chen walk directly toward Yu Qingxuan, Yu Kaingxu jumped, pale with fright. She tried to grab Long Chen but missed, thus she began to sweat. Did this fellow really think that this was his home? He didn't care about any rules. Excuse me, big sister, may I be so bold as to ask your beautiful and kind self if we could switch seats? Long Chen smiled at the woman seated beside Yu Qingxuan. This woman was also a princess and was here to accompany Yu Qingxuan. 
Seeing Long Chen walk over and ask such a thing, she was stunned, feeling so lost that she didn't know what to say. It had to be known that this was a state banquet, so the seats had been set up long in advance. With the seating arrangement made with the finest attention to detail, how could they just randomly switch seats? Furthermore, it was done right in front of the emperor. Was he crazy? Yu Ziyuan stared at Long Chen darkly, but he didn't say anything. As for Jiang Huixin and Zhu Langxin, they exchanged a glance and shook their heads inside. This child's head really wasn't normal. Could he not see what situation he was in? I... The woman looked at the emperor and then the two empresses. After that, she stood up. Seeing them not stop her under Long Chen's repeated thanks and gratitude, she switched seats with him and walked over to Yu Kaingsu's side. He he success. Seeing Yu Kingshuan's red face, not knowing if it was from embarrassment or panic, Long Chen stuck out two fingers as an expression of victory. To wear casual dress and act so frivolously during an important event, it's clear that the Vermilion Bird Empire's dignity has been ruined by people like you, said that stiff elder suddenly. In front of the emperor, others didn't dare to open their mouths. But this elder made such a blunt appraisal right in front of him, his gaze full of disdain. Old fellow, let me tell you I am no longer the old me. It would be best if you didn't speak to me, or don't blame me for not giving you face, warned Long Chen. Long Chen, he's philosopher's son, warned Yu Qingxuan hastily. He can call himself whatever he wants. It doesn't matter to me. What law have I broken for wanting to sit with my wife? Long Chen stuck his neck out at that elder. While you may not have violated any specific laws, your actions have shattered all notions of propriety, justice, integrity, and honor. Having disturbed the order of the ruler and his subjects, it just shows that you don't understand how to respect your seniors, and you have no sense of honor or shame. What face do you have to even sit here and talk? said the elder expressionlessly. The elder's words were sharp and merciless. He directly criticized Long Chen's actions in front of the emperor, clearly intent on driving him out of here. As for everyone else, the majority of the diplomatic emissaries, princes, and princesses all felt great anticipation of this, hoping for philosopher's son to teach a lesson to this little fellow who didn't know how high the heavens were. You wish to take advantage of my weakness? I gave you too much space, didn't I? You want to play? You shameless old fellow, I'll play with you. Long Chen sneered at the elder. Seeing Long Chen dare to curse the philosopher, Everyone was stunned. But when they glanced at the emperor, they saw that he was expressionless, as if nothing was happening in front of him. It seemed that he had no intention of interfering. What? Why it is going on? I think you should take a look at Inread, Com Chapter 3983, Verbal Battle with a Philosopher, just as everyone was shocked. Philosopher's son said, You say that I am shameless. Please tell me how I am shameless. Just for the words propriety, justice, integrity, and honor to come out of your mouth is the greatest shamelessness, said Long Chen lightly. However, this elder was clearly a master debater. Even in front of Long Chen's rude accounting, his expression didn't change in the slightest. There is nothing wrong with a noble woman and a noble man coming together. But matters between a man and woman need the fathers and mothers to act as a go-between. For you to forcibly change seats in public in front of everyone shows a complete lack of decorum. It is shameless, it is uncouth, it is unscholarly, and it is a clear disregard of etiquette, said philosopher's son. T.C.H. How laughable! If everyone required their parents to act as a go-between for marriage, then tell me where you came from. Did you break free out of a stone? Cursing me is no different from cursing your ancestors, no, sneered Long Chen. What nonsense! The laws of etiquette have existed since time immemorial. You lack logic, so you resort to personal attacks. 
it can be seen just how inferior you are such rotting wood cannot be carved snorted philosopher son the laws of etiquette had existed since time immemorial in the primal chaos era when humanity devoured raw meat just to avoid starving to death when humans had no clothes to cover their bodies according to your own logic they should have simply died out huh then none of us would exist in this world your ancestors had no parents acting as matchmakers and that's the only reason they reproduced until your generation but now you express such an opinion you are clearly unfilial toward your ancestors you also mentioned the order between a ruler and their subjects his majesty himself didn't even say anything about my actions but you are here barking like a wild dog as i see it you are completely disregarding his majesty a complete lack of loyalty moreover at your age you can still be so shameless as to intentionally target me it can be seen that you lack humanity as well when targeting me you tell me to respect my elders you are clearly twisting logic giving people a twisted view about life that is unjust you someone who is not loyal not just not humane and not filial are sitting there shamelessly preaching to others i have journeyed throughout the entire world but i have never seen someone so shamelessly shameful upon hearing this everyone was silent long chen had managed to unleash such a verbal assault at once his words sharp as blades cutting straight to the core as a result everyone was struck dumb the princes and princesses looked at him worshipfully if before this they wanted him to lose face now they were on his side that was because philosopher sun often criticized them and he was very harsh drawing their ire now that long chen had cursed him so thoroughly they were all happy on the other hand yu zioyan jang huixin and zhu langxin were expressionless but their sealed tight mouths sold them out they clearly wanted to laugh finally the philosopher's son who was said to possess an unmatched tongue had met his match and he was even cursed black and blue yun philosopher's son was enraged long chen was clearly twisting logic but his counterattack was ruthless if philosopher sun wanted to resolve his points he would need to do so one by one however if he were to do so that would reduce him to the point of discussing the tao with long chen but how could he a grand philosopher be reduced to that point against him destroying long chen's points one by one wouldn't match his status hmph the human race's progress only continues forward when did the wheel of history ever go backward i can't be bothered to explain such things to you you say that i am not loyal tell me which is the greatest heaven earth ruler family or master t c h you can't answer so you just change the topic you're just drawing me into your most skilled domain and using your incomparably thick idiotic experience to defeat me right I know that whichever one I choose, you have traps waiting for me. But I don't believe such nonsense, so I'll say whatever I want. In my opinion, the earth is the greatest, said Long Chen. In this case, the heavens referred to the heavenly Taoists, the earth referred to the father and mother, the ruler was the emperor, family meant blood relatives, and the master meant the master who raised you heaven earth ruler family master there were several rankings for them but the first two never changed the heavens were what gave birth to all things while humans were all born from a father and mother without them you would not exist thus in all rankings heaven was first and earth was second as for the rest sometimes the ruler was third and sometimes the master was third amongst cultivators the master was third while the parents gave birth to them it was the master who gave them the chance to change their fates amongst the scholars though they would place the ruler as third because without a powerful ruler a nation would crumble without a powerful ruler the people would have no assurance of safety 
If there was no nation, then, naturally, there would be no family. Thus, to philosopher's son, the most obvious order would be heaven, earth, ruler, family, and then master. Are you aware that if you marry the princess, you will need to marry into the imperial family? Your children will have the imperial surname, asked philosopher's son. I am aware and I am willing, said Long Chen. Philosopher Sun smiled slightly and then looked at the wall. After pointing at the sunflowers in the murals, he said, The golden disk shows off its brilliance as it soaks in the sun's rays, but it completely forgets the favor of all the rain that raised it. All it thinks about is its own rapid growth. Upon hearing this, Jiang Huixin and Zhu Langson's expressions changed. Yu Qingxuan in particular was enraged. Philosopher Sun was insulting Long Chen, saying that if he was to marry her, it would be for glory and riches. He even went so far as to say that Long Chen was forgetting his duty to his parents, that since his children would not have his surname, he was an unfilial son. In front of his insults, Long Chen simply sneered and pointed toward the mural as well. Spotting a giant willow tree with two birds on it, Long Chen instantly thought of Li Ryan. Willow leaves are thin like silk, hanging off the branches in the thousands. The crow clamors, its cawing pleasing only to itself. In truth, those birds were brown, so they weren't crows. But if philosopher Sun was going to use the murals to attack him, Long Chen would directly counterattack. What did an old fellow who refused to die know about love? All he knew how to do was chatter. As for the viewpoint of the secular world, Long Chen didn't care at all. His feelings were something only he and his lovers needed to know. Long Chen then looked at Yu Qingxuan. As expected, she was looking back at him. When their gazes met, it felt like they could see the depths of each other's hearts. That unhesitating trust was the most precious thing. In truth, in terms of creative literature, Long Chen's counterattack was clearly inferior to Philosopher Sun's. However, Philosopher Sun had been the one to attack first and had prepared himself, while Long Chen only replied casually. Thus, it could be said to be even. As a result, people were quite surprised by Long Chen's quick reactions. They knew that cultivators rarely had such literary grace. Philosopher Sun snorted. HMPH, I also have a verse about willows, wild branches whip through the air like blades, bringing chaos. The wild leaves cover the sun and moon, concealing the light of heaven and earth. I am wild. How laughable. Just now you said that I was using personal attacks, but aren't you doing the same now? As I see it, you are even more inferior than before but if you want to play, I'll accompany you. Long Chen looked around and suddenly raised the teapot on the table. After that, he looked at Philosopher Sun, then at the teapot, and then back again before suddenly exclaiming, it couldn't be that you're a teapot that achieved sentience, or are you? The stiff-faced Philosopher Sun appeared fat, and as he settled into a seated position, his face seemed even fatter. Upon closer observation, Long Chen couldn't help but draw parallels between Philosopher Sun's visage and that of a teapot. The longer he scrutinized them, the more striking their resemblance became. Upon hearing this, quite a few people were unable to hold back their laughter. That was because their appearance was truly similar. In an instant, Philosopher Sun's expression grew unsightly. Flames almost burst out of his eyes. In read, com chapter 3984 eyes growing out of your but philosopher son's fortitude was clearly much greater than his disciples. Although flames of anger were about to burst out of his head, he didn't curse back. He had already given his parable and taken the advantage. If he were to instead end up quibbling with Long Chen over this matter, he would appear to be lacking self-cultivation. Long Chen waved the teapot and smiled. Sharp mouth, big belly, high ears, it comes to the dragon table proudly. 
but compared to the vast sea, it is ultimately too small to carry anything. It can only be used to cause a splash. This was Long Chen's true response. Upon hearing this, everyone stared at him in shock. He truly had talent in this regard. He was mocking philosopher Sun for thinking himself great just because he sat in his position while inside. He was lacking anything substantial. In fact, his final sentence was clearly saying that he didn't have much learning and was only showing off whatever abilities he had. It was the exact case of a half-empty bottle making the most noise. Philosopher Sun's expression sank. For a moment, he was unable to find a reply. The emperor, empresses, and concubines were all stunned. As for the princes and princesses, they were already prostrating themselves toward Long Chen in admiration. In this empire, matching wits with a philosopher of this caliber was likely akin to facing off against a formidable three-flower expert. To not reciprocate is against etiquette. You say that me wearing a casual dress for an important event is against etiquette. But you have no idea what the true meaning of my clothes is and I can't be bothered to explain it to you. Since you care so much about my clothes, I will use clothing as a response, sneered Long Chen. Long Chen's gaze then roved across the room. He suddenly saw a woman in the murals who was working hard on embroidery with a needle in her hand, her head lowered over her work. The needle in her hand was golden with a silver tip. It was precisely the kind of precious needle that imperial maidens used. A silver needle soaked in gold, weaving up and down the fabric. Eyes growing out of your butt, seeing only clothing, not people. People were left dumbfounded. Long Chen was truly a vicious character. Was he really planning on fighting philosopher Sun to the death without leaving the slightest leeway? Just before, he had said that philosopher Sun wasn't qualified for his position, and now he was even more direct saying that the latter was short-sighted. No matter how much the imperial family cared about him, a needle was still just a needle. Even if it was gilded in gold and painted with silver, it was just a needle. There was nothing for him to be proud of. Just now, philosopher's son had used the sunflower to say that Long Chen was attempting to climb through society by forgetting his parents and he utilized the willow to say that Long Chen was wild and conceited, saying that he would face his retribution sooner or later. But Long Chen's counterattack was even sharper than a blade. As a result, philosopher Sun was so enraged that he stood up and pointed at Long Chen, his whole body shaking with rage. However, Long Chen simply ignored him, pouring a cup of tea for Yu Qingchuan. He didn't even look at philosopher Sun as if telling him to continue responding. Long Chen, you are being rude to philosopher's son. Quickly apologize. At this time, Jiang Huixin suddenly spoke up. She had no choice but to speak. It was because the banquet had yet to even start. But the atmosphere was already like this. Long Chen looked at her. Although she was chiding him, he could see the encouragement and support in her eyes. She was very pleased with his beating of philosopher's son. How could Long Chen not know what she meant? He smiled and said, Hey, my little son, no, sorry, I misspoke, cough, philosopher's son, PFFT. Yu Ziyuan was in the midst of drinking tea, but he spat it out when he heard this. Your Majesty, rebuked Jiang Huixin. Sorry, cough, it wasn't on purpose, said Yu Ziyuan awkwardly. Jiang Huixin glared at him before looking away. An emperor of a nation spat out tea during a state banquet. That was a loss of the state's dignity. Long Chen, keep going. Yu Ziyuan hastily redirected everyone's attention to Long Chen. Ah, philosopher, son, I'm sorry. You know, as a person, my mouth is faster than my head. Maybe I said something wrong, so I hope you won't mind. This can just count as friends fighting, no? Next time, why don't we exchange pointers again when we're alone? Apologized Long Chen. 
he naturally had to listen to his mother-in-law as he was still hoping for her to support him hmph do you think that i would quibble with a baby like you philosopher's son snorted and sat back down however many people could hear that he was afraid wang chen had managed to get the last word in essence philosopher's son had lost seeing long chen apologize gratified yu king shuan as she understood long chen's temper the best a person who could force long chen to concede had yet to be born however for her long chen was willing to apologize she knew that this was something that betrayed his principles of everyone present only she knew just how proud of a person long chen was all of a sudden she reached out her hand and held long chen's startling him yu king shuen had taken the initiative when he looked into her eyes his heart warmed but he also felt a pang of guilt this little concession was nothing compared to her undergoing a thousand reincarnations for him what he owed her could not be repaid in this life or even ten lives after as their gazes locked this short moment felt like an eternity they didn't even hear when the feast started or what the emperor was saying it was only when the attendants started placing food on their table that they were drawn out of their stupor the two of them then smiled and started eating at this banquet the wine flowed freely and the food was excellent there was also entertainment with singers and dancers long chen even asked yu king shuen why they hadn't invited the fairies of the zither sect over hearing this question yu king uxen almost burst into laughter did he really think that the zither sect could be asked to play just for anyone only then did long chen understand that the zither sect didn't even place the imperial family in their eyes if they wanted to play for them they would if they didn't nothing could make them play long chen your little debate just now was very marvelous i didn't expect that your mouth was not at all inferior to your fists said someone suddenly the one speaking was an expert from the heavenly ruler seal empire and a true double supreme at that even though he was smiling at long chen that smile didn't reach his eyes if you have something to say just say it there's no need to set up a whole stage we're all busy if you want to talk let's talk if you want to fight then i'll happily accompany you long chen picked up a napkin and wiped his mouth looking at this guy indifferently he knew that the good show was just starting at the same time though he smelled something off it seemed that now he would learn why the emperor had invited him to this state banquet in read com chapter three thousand nine hundred eighty five ignorant fellow long chen's response lacked any politeness but there was no need for him to be polite in the three thousand worlds his dragon roars at the nine heavens had killed countless experts including the people of the heavenly ruler's seal empire as a result the heavenly ruler seal empire definitely wouldn't be his ally as soon as that person spoke to him long chen knew that he was up to something thus long chen refused to act courteously however that expert didn't seem to mind and kept smiling i heard just now that you wanted to sit with your wife are you deriding princess king shuin as your wife one long chen curled his lips with your little bit of ability don't come out and embarrass yourself with your little intelligence do you wish to challenge my relationship with king shuin this term exists in the mortal world and the immortal world the meaning is to stay together for a lifetime until you're both old and white-haired if you wish to challenge me i'd advise you to pick another direction people should know their own limits or they will only be asking to be bullied even after this chiding that expert's expression didn't change then tell me how did my heavenly ruler seal empire offend you why did you kidnap my seventy brother and why did you kill my empire's experts because the weather was bad that day responded long chen directly you that expert finally lost control 
and killing intent exploded out of him. What you? I already told you to get to the point. Whether you represent yourself or your heavenly ruler's seal empire, I will accompany you. A martial competition or a scholarly competition, you can pick one. If you want to play, let's play, Long Chen shrugged indifferently. Without his heart devil, Long Chen had no misgivings about anything, so he did whatever he wanted. It was like he had returned to his youth and had no misgivings at all. That expert was about to reply when an elder by his side stopped him. The elder said, Let us put aside the matter of children for now. Your Majesty Zioan, I wish to ask you, why has your noble army repeatedly provoked and attacked the people of my empire? Today I invited the violet thunderclap, eastern brilliance, Feather Cry and the other empire's diplomats to hear a satisfactory response. This question infuriated the people from the Vermilion Bird Empire. Previously, they could be considered friendly neighbors with the Heavenly Ruler Seal, but it was clear that the Heavenly Ruler Seal Empire had cast its side to the Violet Thunderclap Empire. Moreover, they were the ones causing trouble on the border, and they were also the ones to attack first. The Vermilion Bird Empire only counterattacked when they invaded the border. But now, the Heavenly Ruler Seal Empire actually acted like the victims. That was absolutely shameless. It was like a thief crying, Stop thief! All eight empires had sent diplomats here as the representatives of eight major empires. However, this was no diplomatic mission. It was clearly bullying. What are you saying? The scuffles on the border are just two nations training together and mutually raising each other. Why have you elevated this to a concern for our nations? Responded Jiang Huixin on Yu Ziyuan's behalf. Long Chen glanced at Yu Ziyuan, seeing him drinking wine with his head down as if he hadn't heard anything. Long Chen couldn't help finding it curious. With Yu Ziyuan's temper, shouldn't he be directly exploding at this moment? My mom set up a screening formation around him. Due to his cultivation technique, his temper is fierce, so mom set up this formation to screen his six senses. They are already used to acting like this. Dad always acts like this in such moments, leaving these things to my mom and second mom, transmitted Yu Qingxuan. Only then did Long Chen understand. He already knew that there was no way someone like Yu Ziyuan would be able to endure such a thing. Exchanging pointers? Empress, your words really are interesting. In the last few years, the Vermilion Bird Empire has been focusing more and more on the martial side while abandoning the learning side. You are clearly raising your combat power for war. It is precisely due to this that matters between our two empires have grown increasingly tense. If we have to trace the source of this friction, we can only conclude that it stems from your side. Tell me, Master Gongjai, did I say anything wrong? That elder actually turned to look at Philosopher Sun. Philosopher Sun's surname was Sun, but his given name was Gongjai. In the Vermilion Bird Empire, the majority of people called him Philosopher's Son, and only people from outside the Empire would call him something else. Shockingly, Philosopher's Son nodded. The Vermilion Bird Empire has truly been focusing on martial arts too much lately, leaving a heavy atmosphere over the Empire. Rather than focusing on learning to better themselves, the people are focusing on fighting. With that, they are unable to control the greed and avarice in their hearts. I also share the blame over this matter. Long Chen was stunned. What was he doing? Joining the other side? This was clearly throwing the empire into the other side's trap, and it was such an obvious trap as well. The Vermilion Bird Empire has been increasing its number of cultivators to the point that it is a serious threat to my heavenly ruler seal empire's peace. We argue for what is right, but instead we are slaughtered by your respected nation. Do you have anything to say that explains your actions? Demanded the elder righteously. 
to use literature to reach the Tao, to spread a culture of learning throughout the land is the true King Tao. However, the current Vermilion Bird Empire is focusing entirely on martial arts, causing people's hearts to be warlike. People then grow violent and fickle. Even in this state banquet, there are people who don't understand etiquette or the ways of the world. They make a fool of themselves, a waste of the Vermilion Bird's blessing. Your Majesty truly must revitalize the Empire's culture, declared philosopher Sun. In the end, he even dragged Long Chen into his words, causing Long Chen's temper to instantly explode. He snorted, This world really is unjust. How do idiots manage to live for so long? Do they spend their entire lives cultivating their face? I've seen shameless people, but not someone as shameless as you. You eat the Vermilion Bird Empire's food, drink the Vermilion Bird Empire's wine, and benefit from the greatest status and wealth here, yet you side with some outsiders. Fuck, some people really are less than a dog. At the very least, a dog knows not to bite its master. You, you little brat, what right do you have to speak at this time? Raged philosopher Sun, standing and shouting at Long Chen furiously. You, you ignorant old fellow, you dare to bark like a dog here? Long Chen also stood and cursed back at philosopher Sun. Seeing this scene, Yu Kaingsu, Zhu Yifeng, and the others almost cheered. This cursing was truly satisfactory. They felt their own blood heating up. The other side has forced their way all the way to our gates, yet you are still so blind and do not understand the situation. All you know is how to help other dogs eat crap. Did you grow up on crap? Is that why your mouth is so smelly? After cursing philosopher Sun, Long Chen's gaze roved across the experts present. He sneered, what does the Vermilion Bird Empire's focus on literature or martial arts have to do with any of you? Do you think you have the right to interfere? Who do you think you are to tell our Vermilion Bird Empire what to do? The Minghong Saber suddenly appeared on Long Chen's back. He patted the hilt and shouted, if anyone wants to fight, let's fight. Anyone from your junior generation, come out and let's have a fight to the death. In an instant, sharp killing intent filled the entire banquet hall, so cold that it gave people goosebumps. One, the term being used for wife here can be split into two words, old grandmother. In read, com chapter 3986, trap, do you see? This is the result of focusing too much on martial arts. Instead of talking reason, you just want to use violence. Violence cannot solve problems. We have managed to develop our culture to this point, but you are still using the most primitive, barbaric methods to deal with issues, raged philosopher Sun. Pure nonsense. Your so-called culture is nothing more than a thin veil over your barbaric, hypocritical self. You, a so-called cultured person think yourselves superior and can pass judgment on everything like you should be the ones to decide other people's fates. Do you think you are some kind of saint? I spit on you. Our enemies have come to our door, and you are still helping them speak. You dare to eat our food while working for the other side. You dare to be so wanton. Have you gotten so used to peace that you've forgotten the essence of this world? People can talk reason with other people, but can they talk reason with animals? You, someone who hasn't even roamed the entire Vermilion Bird Empire, dare to speak of a worldview? Have you seen the ghouls from hell? Have you seen the devils of a devil world? Have you seen the ten thousand races? You haven't seen jack shit. Did you think reading a few books would allow you to understand the universe? HMPH, I've read more books than you've ever seen. What right do you have to be arrogant? The essence of this world is that if there is reason to speak of, we can talk reason, and if there is no reason to speak of, we can only talk with our fists. 
as for your so-called culture it's a high-sounded excuse for the wolf to eat the sheep the bloody greedy nature hasn't changed at all you an old fogey who doesn't understand anything wish to stall the development of an empire did you think that when devils ghosts demons and monsters come to slaughter you they will listen to your foolish rambling long chen's voice grew louder and louder until the entire palace was shaking moreover his icy killing intent made this place seem like a bloody battlefield you you pfft philosopher sun suddenly coughed up blood and passed out but someone immediately caught him he found that philosopher's son was only unconscious however it was unknown if it was from anger or fright no matter how loud you talk it means nothing you can't scare anyone also i don't know what you are intending do you represent the attitude of the vermilion bird empire asked the elder of the heavenly ruler seal empire long chen is currently a commoner of my vermilion bird empire and for a regular commoner to possess such great vision how could my imperial family be so short-sighted the vermilion bird empire has no wild ambitions of expanding our territory or bullying others we only want to get stronger to protect our people no matter how the future changes no matter if our enemies are devils ghosts demons or monsters we will have the power to protect every single person in the empire they will not need to set foot onto the cruel battlefield said jang hewickson lightly she was clearly supporting long chen this was why she had demanded long chen to participate in the state banquet thus despite yu zioyan's objections she still gave the command for long chen to be summoned in the end long chen didn't betray her expectations he fearlessly expressed words that might have been difficult for the imperial family to say pursing their opponents on her behalf after all long chen didn't have to worry about his status so he could curse or attack anyone he wanted what he had said caused jang hewickson to cheer for him inside even though she couldn't express it well said then how are you going to guarantee that after you get stronger you won't bully the neighboring empires demanded that young double supreme from the heavenly ruler seal empire are you saying that the vermilion bird empire must cripple themselves for you to feel at peace sneered long chen ignoring everything else the first thing would be to hand you over you bastard otherwise the vermilion bird empire should just wait to be greeted with swords at this time wang tianiao stood up you're the bastard you're practically bullying us before long chen replied ju yifeng was already roaring although he hadn't been with long chen for long he felt great admiration for long chen to the extent that it was even somewhat worshipful he couldn't help himself when long chen was insulted like this this caused all the princes and princesses to be startled the always cowardly Zhu Yifeng, who had never dared to lift his head, actually drew all the attention to himself at this time. When Zhu Yifeng stood up for Long Chen, his mother's eyes lit up with a touch of pride. This was what a man should be like. So what? If you don't like it, let's fight. Wang Tianyao sneered and stood. Long Chen's heart skipped a beat. He was about to stop it but Zhu Yifeng was already responding. Come! Long Chen immediately cursed inside. Zhu Yifeng was not a match for Wang Tianyao. Moreover, Wang Tianyao had intentionally set a trap for Zhu Yifeng, taking advantage of the latter's impulsiveness, which clouded his judgment at the moment. Wang Tianyao, you are quite despicable. If you have the guts, come at me. Long Chen glared at Wang Tianyao is killing intent blazing he's the one who agreed to it if he's afraid of death he can back out i won't force him to fight however he he i know that the vermilion bird empire's people care a great deal about face if he can be so shameless as to renege on his agreement i won't mind it sneered wang Tianyao. every man in the vermilion bird empire is a real man 
capable of holding up the heavens. We don't take back our word. I, Chu Yifeng, am an imperial disciple with the GLI bloodline of my ancestors. Even if I fight to the death, I will not frown, declared Zhu Yifeng angrily. Long Chen began to panic inside. This foolish child, what happened to his calmness? Did he not know his own limits? But this matter was now linked to the royal family space, so there was no way for Long Chen to stop him. Hurry up and think of a way to stop this fool. Wang Tianyo will kill him, transmitted Long Chen to Yu Qingxuan. Long Chen had fought Wang Tianyo before and knew his true power. In his estimation, not even three Zhu Yifengs would be enough to beat one Wang Tianyao. Your Majesty, please open the martial stage. Why not let my violet thunderclap empire exchange pointers with your vermilion bird empire? It can count as dinner entertainment, said the elder beside Wang Tianyao. Jiang Huixin and Zhu Langxin's expressions were ugly. They looked at Yu Ziyuan, and he said, prepare the stage. Let me see whose guts are bigger. That final sentence was clearly a threat. On the surface, it was praise for Zhu Yifeng's bravery, while on the other side, it was a warning to Wang Tianyao. If he really had the guts, he could try to kill his son. Long Chen, don't worry. No matter how powerful Wang Tianyao is, he won't dare to kill Zhu Yifeng, comforted Yu Qingxuan. Foolish girl, you're thinking too simply. Wang Tianyao truly does dare to kill Zhu Yifeng. He could simply claim that it was an accidental death, citing that blades have no eyes. With the eight nations present, it's evident they came prepared. Perhaps they wish to kill Yifeng to test the Vermilion Bird Empire's response. Unless the emperor is willing to wage war against all eight empires at once, he will have no choice but to swallow this. However, if the Vermilion Bird Empire wishes to start a war, they must have a justifiable reason. Going to war solely due to an accidental death from a mutually agreed-upon combat would only fuel rumors that the Empire is acting out of petness and without a just cause. Such actions could stain their reputation as sore losers. But if you don't go to war, it will be a serious blow to the Empire's morale. That's why these fellows are extremely vicious, said Long Chen darkly. Only then did Yu Qingxuan realize that she had been thinking too simply. But it was at this moment that a circular design lit up at the center of the banquet hall, and a martial stage appeared inside. Suddenly, two rays of light shot out of the martial stage, sucking in Wang, Tianyao, and Zhu Yifeng. This chapter upload first at Inread, Com Chapter 3987, Treacherous Little Person, when the ancient martial stage appeared at the center of the hall, countless runes lit up throughout the room, causing the entire hall to become as bright as day. However, this stage was just a projection that gave people a feeling of being right on stage, Inread, Com at this moment. Two rays of light entered the stage. They were Wang Tianyao and Zhu Yifen. But before their figures even landed on the stage, divine light already erupted out of them. Zhu Yifeng roared and flames burst out of him. As the mark of the vermilion bird appeared on his saber, he slashed it at Wing Tianyo. Boom! Lightning exploded. Within the flames, Zhu Yifeng coughed up blood as he was defeated in one move. When the lightning faded, People saw that Wang Tianyao hadn't even taken out a weapon. With his bare hands, he blocked Zhu Yifeng's divine weapon, shocking everyone, including Long Chen. His thunder force has improved again. It's dozens of times stronger than it was in the Three Thousand Worlds, so his power is now comparable to Long Aoshin and Kun Tu. No wonder Wang Tianyao had still come here despite knowing that Long Chen would be here. He had decided to make up for his previous defeat. This is a prince of the Vermilion Bird Empire, the great GLI bloodline. Are you sure that your father is the emperor? Wing Chaniao looked at Zhu Yifen disdainfully. 
Hearing this, Ju Yifant was enraged. This was a provocation toward the entire imperial family, and was the greatest insult to his mother. Die. The flames around Zhu Yifen suddenly exploded in power, forming a giant image of the vermilion bird. That was the specific mark of the imperial family. As soon as this illusory figure appeared, an ancient aura burst into existence and Zhu Yifen's entire body was enveloped by divine flames. He appeared like a battle god of fire. After channeling all of his power into one attack, Ju Yifeng's saber hacked down with explosive might. Boom! When this saber fell, the entire martial stage was cut in two, proof that his power was truly astonishing. However, what made Long Chen speechless was that Ju Yifeng was unable to lock down his opponent. As a result, Wang Tianyao simply dodged. To Long Chen, such an attack was essentially meaningless. Wang Tianyao's smile widened. He easily dodged just by stepping aside, and then his hand reached out like lightning toward Zhu Yifeng's neck. On the other hand, Zhu Yifeng was shocked to see his attack miss. He then tried to parry the attack with his saber, but it was already too late. He could only step back. However, when he did, his hand turned numb and his saber landed in Wang Tianyao's hand. Apparently, Wang Tianyao's sudden attack had been a feint, and his true goal was to take the saber. This is the prince of the Vermilion Bird Empire. HMPH, you can't even last a single move against me. Wang Tianyao pointed Zhu Yifeng's saber at him, but looked at Long Chen. Return my wild blade and lightning tower, and I'll spare his life. However, before Long Chen could reply, Zhu Yifeng roared. With a flame blade in his hand, he attacked Wang Tianyao. The Vermilion Bird Empire's warriors are heroes who dare to fight to the death. There are no cowards afraid of dying among us. Zhu Yifeng somehow lacked any of his normal cowardice and small butts. Despite clearly knowing that he wasn't a match for Wang Tianyao, he still fought to the last breath. Since you want to die so badly, you can't blame me. Wang Tianyao smiled sinisterly. He was just like a hungry wolf staring at a sheep throwing itself at him. Wang Tianyao Long Chen shot toward the martial stage, knowing that he was going to kill Zhu Yifeng. However, as soon as he got close to the martial stage, a screen of light appeared in front of Long Chen. He then felt space twist around him and he returned to his original seat. Just then, startled cries rang out. Zhu Yifeng's saber pierced through his body, and blood flowed down his chest, soaking his robes red. Wang Tianyao just smiled sinisterly and poured his thunder force throughout Zhu Yifeng's body, destroying his meridians. Even if Zhu Yifeng didn't die, he would be crippled. Wang Tianyao Seeing this scene, Long Chen was shaking with rage. Wang Tianyo didn't dare to fight him, so he attacked someone else. This was intolerable. As for the other princes and princesses, they were also infuriated. Wang Tianyo was too sinister. Whether it was his mouth or his methods, they were all infuriating. Prince Yifeng was truly powerful. I greatly admire his boldness. However, swords and blades have no eyes. You can't blame me. At this moment, Wang Tianyo put on an act as if he hadn't just done this on purpose. But that sinister smile on his face had long since said everything that needed to be said. When Wang Tianyo let go, Zhu Yifeng collapsed on the ground, his body paralyzed. But suddenly, the martial stage quivered transporting Zhu Yifeng and Wang Tianyao out. But to everyone's surprise, when Zhu Yifeng came out, the saber was already out of his body, and he didn't seem injured or weakened at all. It was as if he was fine. What? Even Wang Tianyao was stunned. Although that attack had seemed to be just a simple stab of the saber, all his energy had been transmitted into Zhu Yifeng's body secretly. In other words, 
he had planned on leaving Zhu Yifen with an intact corpse. After a moment of shock, Long Chen suddenly turned toward where the concubines were. As expected, he saw that Zhu Yifeng's mother was pale, and blood slowly leaked out of her mouth. Mom, at this moment, Zhu Yifeng didn't care about the palace's etiquette and directly ran over to his mother. Seeing her state, he instantly understood that she had used some kind of substitution art to help him block that killing blow. Zhu Yifen was shocked and enraged, as well as aggrieved and ashamed. He hated himself for being powerless, and even implicated his mother. My son, don't cry. You did very well today. You were like a real man. And mom is very proud. His mother's face was as pale as paper. His aura was unstable, but she was still smiling proudly. Quickly bring my concubine to heel, shouted Yu Ziyuan, his expression dark. Moreover, killing intent roiled in his eyes as if it might explode at any moment. Ju Yifen's mother was quickly brought away. Looking at her condition, it seemed to be a serious wound, which left many people feeling worried. The princes and princesses glared at Wing Tianyao, but he just shrugged innocently. If your skills are inferior, you shouldn't blame others. This is a world where the strong are respected. Whoever's fist is stronger is who is right. If you are weak, don't blame others for being strong. If a mantis tries to block a chariot, if an ant tries to shake a tree, it will pay the price. Wang Tianyao's arrogant and fearless appearance was exceptionally enraging. This was clearly using the power of all eight empires to provoke them. And suddenly, Long Chen gripped the Mingong saber on his back. He coldly said, So you mean to say that you think you are very powerful? Then let's play. If you can block three moves from me, I, Long Chen, will kill myself right here in this hall. When Long Chen said this, every expert present jumped in shock, staring at Long Chen in disbelief. I think you should take a look at Inread, Com Chapter 3988, Complete Defeat Long Chen's voice was like thunder echoing throughout the hall, as if to make sure everyone heard him clearly. It was precisely because of this that everyone was so shocked. The emperor and the empresses were also shocked by this statement, as even experts on their level had misjudged Wang Tianyao's power. His thunder force had already reached the point of returning to the true essence. Although Wang Tianyao had not unleashed any of his true power, just the ease with which he caught a divine weapon barehanded showed that his power was unfathomable. However, Long Chen actually dared to say that he would defeat such a genius within three moves, betting his own life on the line. Did he really have such assurance? The princes and princesses were especially moved as Long Chen's domineering will filled the room. They had never seen someone so domineering before. On the other hand, Wang Tianyao was shocked and enraged as Long Chen was clearly looking down on him. Actually, he had come to wipe away his previous humiliation, but when Long Chen said that he would kill him within three moves, the fear deep within his heart was triggered. After all, Back in the three thousand worlds, he had been completely crushed along with his confidence and pride. Thus, when he returned to the Violet Thunderclap Empire, Wang Tebe personally brought him to a secret realm to train, which caused his power to undergo a qualitative leap. After that, when he heard that Long Chen was in the Vermilion Bird Empire, he directly came with the diplomatic envoy, wanting to fight Long Chen again and avenge his defeat. However, this bet from Long Chen successfully triggered the fear in his heart, causing him to feel numb. This was the heart devil that Long Chen had given him after crushing him. What? You don't dare? Did your guts break after I whooped your ass in the three thousand worlds? If three moves is too many, then we can do one move. If you can last one move against me, I'll kill myself right here and now. How's that? Don't tell me that you still don't dare, said Long Chen coldly. One move, everyone's, 
eyes almost pop out upon hearing this. Had Long Chen gone crazy? Killing Wang Tianyao in one move? You are courting death. I silence. Just as Wang Tianya was unable to endure it and more and wanted to agree, the elder beside him stopped him. This is a friendly exchange of pointers. So how can it be turned into a personal duel for selfish reasons? Yao Er, it was wrong of you to lose control and injure someone. Hurry and apologize to his majesty. Wang Tianyao seemed afraid of this elder. Although he didn't know why the elder would do this, he still bowed to the emperor and said some nonsense about how it was an accident. However, everyone knew that it was a big fat lie. The elder then turned to Long Chen and indifferently said, You are nothing more than a commoner, so you should take note of your status. In this place, the Vermilion Bird Empire can protect you. But once you leave the empire, you are nothing. Since you're here taking asylum, you should know how to tuck your tail in and be an obedient dog. That provocation actually made Long Chen smile. It's true. Compared to yourselves, I don't have the experience of acting like a dog for a lifetime. I wouldn't dare to compare myself to you in that regard. You wish to anger me? You wish to drive a wedge? You should give it up. You're here to support Wang Tianyao, right? Of course. As his master, I will naturally support my apprentice, said the elder with a smile. Long Chen also smiled. Then I'll just say this. If I, Long Chen, want to kill someone, there is no one in this world who can stop me. Ha ha ha, then I'll eagerly await you. The elder laughed as if he had just heard the world's funniest joke. Long Chen. Yu Kingshuan held Long Chen's hand, afraid that he was going to do something foolish and fall into their trap. The eight empires had clearly come prepared to attack them. At this moment, the atmosphere in the banquet hall was very tense, and the princes and princesses were all enraged, filled with righteous indignation. These diplomats had gone too far. It seems that the last battle wasn't very good. Why not have this prince come out and experience the teachings of your vermilion Bur royal family? At this moment, an expert from the heavenly ruler Seal Empire stood. Clearly, he was excluding Long Chen with his challenge, as Long Chen was not a member of the royal family. I will exchange some pointers with you. At this moment, the ICU Kaing Su stood. She had long since been nursing a bellyful of fire. Princess Kaiyingsu's name is well known, but I just wonder whether that is all you have, said that heavenly ruler seal empire expert. There's no need to exchange words. Let's just talk with our true abilities, shouted Yu Kaiyingsu. The two of them then entered the martial stage. When Yu Kingshuan's sword came out of her sheath, flames erupted. She immediately unleashed her most explosive attack. However, Yu Kaiyingsu only managed to take the advantage for three moves. Seeing this scene, Long Chen shook his head. Yu Kaiyingsu's power did not to be questioned, but her actual perception in combat was extremely lacking. She clearly lacked actual combat experience, so she wasn't actually much stronger than Zhu Yifeng. As expected, on the fifth move, the counterattack was launched and her initiative was obliterated. She was then sent flying by the ninth move. Just as that expert of the heavenly ruler, Seal Empire, was about to launch a vicious blow, the two were sent out of the martial stage. Kaiyingsu, you've lost, announced Yu Zioen coldly. Hearing this, Yu Kaiyingsu bit her lip and her eyes were a bit red. However, she had no choice but to admit that she had lost. Long Chen looked from Yu Zioan to Zhu Yifeng, who was clenching his teeth furiously. He seemed to understand something. Following that, the experts from the eight empires took turns challenging the Vermilion Bird Empire's princes and princesses. As a result, other than the crown prince Zhu Yunwen, 
who barely managed to hold on against his opponent for over a hundred exchanges, everyone else lost within ten moves. Now, all those princes and princesses had ugly expressions. They couldn't even look at you, Zioan, anymore. This time, they had lost all their faces in Reed. Con 16 battles ended in 16 utter defeats. Compared to these experts, they were practically nothing. Princess Kingshuin, I heard that your master is the master of the blazing heaven divine sect. Would you be willing to exchange pointers with this little brother? Another expert of the heavenly ruler seal empire stood up, his gaze examining Yu Kingshuin without restraint. Three young experts had come from the heavenly ruler seal empire. All of them were princes. Under Long Chen's urge, Yu Kingshuin had ignored all the challenges. She knew that if she was injured or humiliated, Long Chen would immediately become a devil, and everything would instantly go out of control. Yu Kingshuin shook her head. I am immersed in the Pill Dao, not the Martial Dao. I also don't like fighting with others. That expert laughed lecherously. Ha ha ha, I like that timid and refined character. I heard that Princess Kingshuin is not yet betrothed, right? Why don't you marry me? Upon hearing this insult, Yu Kingshuin's expression instantly changed. She was about to grab Long Chen when she found that he had vanished. After that, startled cries rang out amongst the experts of the heavenly ruler Seal Empire. That prince was blown apart by a golden fist, transforming into a burst of blood. I think you should take a look at Inreed, Com Chapter 3989, Crushing Wing Tani Inreed, Com The Heavenly Ruler Seal Empire's Prince didn't even know that death had arrived before him, as did the elder by his side who failed to react in time. Long Chen was too fast, so fast that he escaped everyone's perception before blowing apart that prince with a punch. Even a three-flower earth venerate didn't react fast enough. By the time he did, he was only able to watch as the blood mist exploded. Everyone was stunned. Long Chen actually dared to kill people here, not caring about any laws or rules. Courting death, that earth venerate furiously slammed a palm at him. But Long Chen was already turning and shooting toward Wang Tianyao. How brazen! Wang Tianyao's master and the three flower earth venerate of the heavenly ruler Seal Empire were enraged. For Long Chen to attack Wang Tianyao here was clearly not placing them in his eyes. The next moment, the sound of a saber coming out of its sheath appeared like a dragon cry accompanied by killing intent so intense that even gods and devils would tremble in its presence. This saber was as quick as lightning, instantly sabbing toward the three flower earth venerate of the heavenly ruler seal empire. By the time people heard the saber being unsheathed, it was already piercing toward the body of that earth venerate. The earth venerate was stunned. Long Chen was so fast that it had escaped human limits. Even a three-flower earth venerate was unable to produce such speed without activating their manifestation. With a roar, that earth venerate's power poured through his arms. When the grand Dao runes appeared on his hands, he slammed them together. Boom! The entire banquet hall quivered. To everyone's surprise, Long Chen's saber was only an inch away from that earth venerate's chest, but it was firmly caught by his hands. Just then, a lightning sword appeared in Wang Tianyao's hands, and he stabbed it at Long Chen. Having lost the initiative, Long Chen was in danger now. Long Chen snorted. Completely ignoring Wang Tianyao's attack, he directly let go of the M in Gong saber. He then spun, causing Wang Tanyao's sword to merely flash by him. Using the power of the spin, Long Chen's left elbow, which was covered in golden scales, smashed into the hilt of the Minghong saber. Before this, the Minghong saber was tightly grasped by the earth venerate. However, the sheer force behind Long Chen's strike was overwhelming, surpassing the earth venerate's strength. As a result, the Minghong saber forcefully broke through his grip. 
The Minghong sabre then stabbed through his chest, and the tip of the blade was a full foot out of his back. When that happened, explosive power erupted within his body. Even as an earth venerate, without his manifestation active, his innards were blown apart, causing him to hack up blood. While everyone was still in a state of shock, Long Chen already returned to his seat like a phantom. Most shocking of all, not only had he pulled the saber back from the earth venerate's body, but he had also brought someone back with him. That someone was Wing Tianiao, which stunned even Zhu Ziyuan, Jiang Huixin, Zhu Langxin, and the other three flower earth venerates. Their attention had been on the heavenly ruler seal empire's earth venerate the entire time, and they didn't notice how Long Chen had caught Wing Tianiao. At this moment, Long Chen gripped Wing Tianiao's throat firmly with his hand, blood trickling down his fingers. Wing Tianiao, deprived of his sword, was trembling uncontrollably. The once arrogant demeanor he had displayed was completely gone, and fear was all that remained in his eyes, rendering him unable to utter a sound or even think about begging for mercy. Everyone was deathly silent and merely looked at Long Chen. Those princes and princesses even forgot how to breathe. As they had never seen such a thing before, they were completely stunned. During a state banquet, in front of this many three flower earth venerates, Long Chen actually dared to kill and capture a diplomat, injuring an earth venerate in the process. That was unimaginable to them. Yu Ziyuan had never liked Long Chen. However, when Long Chen attacked, he saw that Long Chen's moves were clean, efficient, and filled with the style of a peerless expert. As a result, even he had no choice but to admire Long Chen's skills. It had to be known that Long Chen's true combat power was still a far cry from three flower earth venerates. However, he was so fast that he managed to strike before they even had a chance to unleash their power. Using just the power of his physical body, he crushed his enemies. Everything from when he attacked to when he was blocked and in danger to his perfect counterattack was incredibly fast, and these reactions could only be honed through constant battle. Moreover, there wasn't the slightest flaw, which showed his combat awareness and profound experience that was accumulated through a lifetime of fighting. Jiang Huixin, Zhu Langxin, and the other experts on their level were all stunned. How many years had it been since they had seen such a terrifying young expert? Long Chen. When Wang Tianyao's master roared, the violent pressure belonging to an earth venerate crashed upon the hall. It was like everyone had suddenly sunk into the deep sea, the pressure capable of directly crushing them. The princes and princes, as well as the other young heavenly geniuses, felt like they couldn't breathe. Their bones creaked as if they would break at any second. This is the pressure of a three-flower earth venerate. Those princes and princesses felt like their bodies would explode, as if their souls would be torn apart. Thus, they were filled with fear inside, having never faced such power before. However, Long Chen didn't even look at that elder and only stared coldly at Wang Tianyao in his hand. I told you, if I want to kill you, not even gods or devils could protect you. Now, do you believe me? Wang Tianyao could only unleash a strange sound from his throat. He couldn't even speak. At this moment, blood poured out from his seven orifices, and his eyes were filled with terror. I should have killed you back in the three thousand worlds. But Lei Linger was kind and let you off. Unfortunately, you didn't know how to repent. Instead, you despicably harmed someone by my side to anger me. Do you feel like you still get to see tomorrow's sun? Long Chen gazed at Wang Tianyao with his icy killing intent. Wang Tianyao's master furiously roared, Long Chen, release Wang Tianyao, otherwise boom. Before he could finish speaking, lightning exploded causing Wang Tianyao to blow up and turn into nothingness. Otherwise, what? After crushing Wang Tianyao, Long Chen turned to look at his sluggish master. 
This chapter upload first at Inri, com chapter 3990 slapping the face of an earth venery, a peak heavenly genius, Wang Tianyao, had been crushed to death by Long Chen. His thunder force exploded like a beautiful firework within the banquet hall. A lightning dragon then appeared on top of Long Chen's body, opening its mouth and devouring all the lightning. Once the lightning was gone, it vanished as well. Wang Tianyao was gone and his soul had been extinguished. Moreover, his final power had been devoured by Lei Ling'er. Seeing this scene, Wang Tianyao's master was quivering with rage. He couldn't believe that Long Chen truly dared to kill Wang Tianyao in front of his eyes. At this moment, divine light flowed within Yu Ziyuan's eyes, and an inconspicuous small smile appeared on his face. Long Chen's domineeringness finally caused Yu Ziyuan to like him ever so slightly. This was the boldness a man should have. Long Chen, Wang Tianyao's master roared. Suddenly, he shot toward Long Chen, and violent pressure exploded out of him, crashing down on Long Chen like the weight of the entire dome of the heavens. A withered sharp claw then reached for Long Chen's face. Seeing this, Long Chen was prepared for an all-out fight, but he suddenly relaxed as a figure appeared in front of him. That figure was the emperor of the Vermilion Bird Empire, Yu Ziyuan. Yu Ziyuan simply reached out and caught Wang Tianyao's master's attack. There was no explosion or wild Kai wave, only a slight quiver in the hall. It turned out that Wang Tianyao's master's overwhelming power was absorbed by the hall. Bao. Just then, Long Chen let go of the Minghong saber and ruthlessly slapped the face of Wang Tianyao's master. Wang Tianyao's master didn't see the slap coming let alone when his attention was focused on Yu Ziyuan. Even if he was fully focused, he might not necessarily be able to dodge this move. Long Chen's slap contained immense power. Thus, with an explosive sound, Wang Tianyao's master smashed into the wall like a meteorite. Oh, as the entire hall shook, its runes flared. In the end, the hall was undamaged, but Wang Tianyao's master was flattened from smashing into the wall and hung there like a painting. When an expert from the violent thunderclap empire went to tear him down, yes, tear him down, they saw that his head was deformed. It was like a frog that had been run over by a wheel. They could no longer tell what his original shape was supposed to be. There were imprints of quite a few runes on his body now. Those were the runes from the wall. When he smashed into the wall, the defensive formation automatically activated, condensing those runes. Wang Tianyao's master was now unconscious, which caused the other experts to be stunned. They were unable to imagine just how powerful Long Chen's slap had to be in order to cause such an effect. In truth, while Long Chen's power was terrifying, there was no way that he could compare to a three-flower earth venerate in peak condition. However, Long Chen's timing was perfect, striking just as Wang Tianyao's master's power was dispersed throughout the hall by Yu Ziyuan. That was precisely his weakest moment when he had expended his current energy and had yet to summon new power. Furthermore, Long Chen hadn't held back with his slack. All his power solidly struck his face without the slightest waste. Actually, Wing Tianyao's master had automatically triggered his three flowers to protect him, otherwise anyone would be directly blown apart by the power of this slap. Your Majesty, what is the meaning of this? We came as guests from so far away. You are practically bullying us, shouted an expert from the Violet Thunderclap Empire. While he was shocked and enraged, he was also afraid. If Yu Ziyuan's temper got the best of him, there was no way that they would survive. After all, this was the capital of the Vermilion Bird Empire. If the killing formation was activated, not one of them would leave to tell the tale. The only reason that they had dared to be so arrogant was because according to their calculations, the Vermilion Bird Empire wouldn't dare to actually attack them. 
but now that the emperor had personally joined in the fight they were deeply afraid yu zioan snorted he was about to reply when his gaze suddenly fell on long chen you can talk reason to them after saying that yu zioan returned to his seat as if nothing had happened for a moment everyone was simply stunned including long chen what medicine had this old fellow taken today as for jiang huixin and zhu langsen their expressions were a bit odd they then exchanged a look seeing the other's astonishment however long chen didn't care about all that he just sneered at the diplomats bullying what about what you've done is that not bullying as for guests from far away does whether or not you're a guest have anything to do with distance aren't you the ones who are most clear about whether or not you are guests why don't you tell me what you're here for to mock bully oppress suppress prob when you came to our home to bully us did you expect us to just take it we were talking reason when did we ever mock bully oppress and suppress the vermilion bird empire raged one of the three flower earth venerates talking reason when we talked reason with you you used your fists now that we're replying in kind you want to talk reason when we talk reason again you act like arrogant show-offs however now that i'm doing the same you act like innocent victims i am not that idiot philosopher's son not one of us here is some easy target for you to bully so don't bother with your childish schemes you want to play such games with your little bit of intelligence it must be nice not to care about others laughing at you peace between empires has never been gained through begging or talking reason true peace is obtained through mutual respect and gratitude but you eight empires came not as guests but as bullies you wanted me to be exiled to probe the attitude and strength of the vermilion bird empire if the empire takes a step back you press them further if the empire stands up for itself you threaten the empire with your combined forces to put it frankly unless the vermilion bird empire continues to concede over and over again the only option is war you are simply looking for an excuse to launch a combined assault on the vermilion bird empire what nonsense none of us was even thinking of such a thing that's entirely your own speculation barked an elder do you dare to swear that on your three flower manifestation asked long chen you the three flower manifestation could not be sworn on lightly as it was what connected the cultivator with the heavens to swear on it was to swear on the heavens so the heavens would judge whether or not the cultivator betrayed this oath or not not one person who had ever betrayed such an oath had a good ending thus no three flower venerate would make such an oath that elder turned completely red in his panic he had no idea what to say and that was already proof of what long chen said seeing this the princes and princesses of the empire were even further incensed this was truly bullying your majesty is this the attitude of your vermilion bird empire the elder from the heavenly ruler seal empire coldly asked does the vermilion bird empire really want to fight all eight empires at once do you wish to go to war are you not afraid of the vermilion bird empire being wiped off of the map ah yu sioan suddenly laughed after laughing his face suddenly became covered in frosty killing intent if you want to fight i'll accompany you good 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 that elder of the heavenly ruler seal empire then exchanged a look with all the other earth venerates who had come after that all the diplomats stood and left gloomily leaving the banquet hall quiet once more in read com chapter three thousand nine hundred ninety one long chen's mission imperial father this child was unfilial and has embarrassed you in front of every one i've lost the face of the royal family please punish me once the diplomatic emissaries left 
Crown Prince Ju Yun Wen suddenly walked over and kowtowed shamefully. Following that, the other princes and princesses were overcome by guilt and shame and kowtow as well. This time, their display was far too embarrassing. Before this, they had thought that they were above others. However, with this one competition, they learned just how cruel reality was. They had always been living in a dream that they weaved for themselves. In front of true experts, they were nothing. Ju Yifink in particular was clenching his teeth, his eyes red. All of them awaited punishment. However, to their surprise, Yu Xiaoyan smiled kindly. Your display today was good. I am gratified, Imperial Father. All the princes and princesses were shocked. In all their memories, Yu Xiaoyan had always been extremely strict and harsh with them. They couldn't recall a single instance when he had spoken to them with such a gentle expression. Moreover, they had all been defeated today, which was a huge humiliation as they had lost the face of the imperial family. But rather than punishing them, Yu Xiaoyan was comforting them. They were completely bewildered. They even wondered whether he was saying the opposite of what he thought for some reason. Thus, not one of them dared to speak. Zhu Xiaoyan slowly stood and walked over to them, personally lifting them up one by one. There was a rare smile on his face. You are all my good sons and daughters, good models for the Vermilion Bird Empire. However, being born in the imperial family is your misfortune. You do not have the freedom of the commoners or the warmth of family. Also, you have to endure more and race as if your life's on the line right from the start. I know that you're all tired, that you've all had it hard. I have seen everything. In truth, I feel bad for you. I wish I could be like a normal father and dote on my children, to watch you grow without looking for any results. I wish I could sit in front of a house and watch as my children played, imperial father. This was their first time feeling the warmth of fatherly love from you, Zioan. Hence, these princes and princesses' eyes all reddened. However, I cannot. In this world, may things are already predetermined. From the moment you were born, you had to carry your own mission. We are the heirs of the Vermilion Bird Empire, the successors of the GLI bloodline. It is fated that we cannot just be ordinary side characters. Thus, we can only demand far more from ourselves. The Vermilion Bird Empire has millions and millions of commoners who entrust their lives to us. Thus, the burden on our shoulders does not permit us to slack off in the slightest. The humiliation given to you from the battles today has shown you the difference. You know where you are lacking now, and this makes you feel ashamed. But what I saw was that you were willing to die on the martial stage despite knowing that you couldn't beat your opponent, that you were still driven by honor in the face of death. I saw the pride of the vermilion bird in you. I saw the nobility of the GLI bloodline. A temporary defeat means nothing. Use this shame to drive yourselves onward. That is the most important thing. Children, rise. Today I'll accompany you to drink until we collapse, ha ha ha. Yu Zioyan laughed, his voice full of satisfaction and gratification. The princes and princesses were moved, feeling ashamed. They returned to their seats, but the pain in their hearts didn't allow them to drink. Long Chen. Yu Xiaoyan turned to Long Chen. Does His Majesty have some grand reward for me for my contributions today? I don't need anything. Just betroth Princess Kingshuan to me and that will be all. Long Chen smiled and struck while Yu Xiaoyan's mood was good. Your contributions? You want a reward? You almost ruined my plans today. Not beating you is already a good thing for you, snorted Yu Xiaoyan. Long Chen was about to casually retort when a flash of comprehension struck him. He suddenly glanced at Jang Huixin and Zhu Langxin, seeming to have grasped something. When Yu Xiaoyan, Jang Huixin, and Zhu Langxin saw that expression, their hearts shook. 
had this fellow really seen through their plan how could that be no matter what i didn't lose face for the vermilion bird empire right let us just treat it as reward and punishment cancelling each other out i won't take any reward and i won't accept any punishment we can count as even said long chen h m p h a nice thought i heard that you have some fine wine cough cough do you really need me to continue said yu xiaoan long chen was speechless was the emperor really so shameless however his father-in-law had spoken so long chen naturally wouldn't be stingy he brought out hundreds of jugs of fine wine from the wine god palace it was many times better than the wine that the imperial family normally enjoyed the fragrance alone was enough to intoxicate them to make them forget about their grievances after that yu Zioyan raised his cup to everyone and drank three cups in a row quickly settling the awkward atmosphere with wine imperial father this time the eight empires seeing that the emperor was in an excellent mood today Chu Yunwen was so brazen as to ask a question. However, Yu Zioyan waved his hand, stopping him. The state banquet today has become a family meal. Let's not talk about matters of the empire. Everything is under control. Children, there's no need to worry about it. After he said that, the atmosphere relaxed a great deal. Seeing him in such a good mood, Ju Yifen was so bold as to ask to be excused after all he wanted to see his mother so he left brother long i didn't know my own power when we first met at the city gates i apologize for any offence i've given you if i have a chance i hope i can get some pointers from brother long the crown prince raised his cup and walked over to long chen speaking respectfully to him this action instantly drew everyone's attention the princes and princesses were all amazed by long chen's sharp attacks quick reactions agile movement art and exquisite techniques even though they were all in the immortal king realm long chen was far stronger than them even someone as powerful as wang tianyo didn't have any chance to retaliate in front of him furthermore he had even handled three flower earth venerates with ease looking down on the experts of eight empires just how domineering and arrogant was that if they had half of long chen's abilities then they wouldn't have lost so much face today thus when the crown prince went over they all raised their cups to long chen to express their respect in read calm you're too courteous we're all family so don't talk like an outsider here cheers long chen laughed and touched his cup to zhu yunwen's he naturally wouldn't let such minor matters weigh on him seeing him be so straightforward the princes and princesses were delighted they all toasted to long chen it wasn't long before people started collapsing as the wine god palace's wine was very powerful after drinking about enough yu Zioyan stood today's family feast can end here Long Chen, I have a mission for you. Tomorrow, take a trip to the Philosopher Institute. Long Chen was startled. Have you thought this through? If I go, perhaps the Philosopher Institute will be torn down. Up to you. Yu Zioyan only left behind three thought provoking words before turning around and leaving. In read, com chapter 3992, the plan of the Vermilion Bird Empire's royal family. When the feast ended, Long Chen bid farewell to Yu Qingxuan and returned to the mansion with Yu Kaingsu. However, Yu Kaingsu remained oddly silent as they traveled. Long Chen smiled at her. Why aren't you talking? It's not like you. How isn't it like me? asked Yu Kaingsu is your will crushed after a tiny setback i wouldn't say that it is crushed but it is definitely a serious blow to me even if i didn't consider myself an unrivalled expert before i thought that it would be hard for me to find a match in the same realm but now i feel like i'm a frog at the bottom of a well i'm still too naive 
Yu Kaiksu bitterly smiled. This battle had truly been a blow to her. All the experts of their royal family had been utterly defeated. Previously, she had had the utmost confidence in herself, and she had even challenged Long Chen. Now she realized just how naive that challenge was. Moreover, she hadn't just wanted Long Chen but also his entire Dragon Blood Legion. Thinking of how confident she had been in herself back then, she was so ashamed that she could barely look at him. Long Chen, are we very naive? Are we laughable? Yes, you're very naive. You. Even if the answer is yes, you don't need to be so direct, rebuked Yu Kaingsu. Oh, you want me to comfort you? In truth, with your character, this little blow is nothing, said Long Chen with a smile. How do you know? We've lost the face of the royal family and our royal father. Considering how prideful he is, the more he doesn't punish us, the worse we will feel inside, sighed Yu Kaingsu. I call you naive and you still don't understand. Your defeat was entirely within expectations. It was also a part of the imperial family's plans. Thus, you don't need to feel any guilt. It's true that all of you are very powerful. There is not one useless coward amongst you, and that's something worthy of praise. When His Majesty praised you, he meant it. He was truly satisfied by your display today, said Long Chen. Really? Of course. If my guess is right, the next step will be a hellish training session for you all. The Emperor wanted you to lose, and everything was a show for the other side to see. Long Chen thought back to the various clues he had spotted during the banquet. He felt that this was very likely. They wanted us to intentionally lose? Why, why are you looking at me like that? Asked Yu Kaingsu. Long Chen sighed. If you still can't even figure this out, you should really give up on being the Empress. Obviously, the royal family was intentionally presenting a weak front in order to either deceive their opponents or lure them into a trap. If they presented a weak front, then it was to buy more breathing room. If it was a trap, then it might be to catch all the enemies at once. In my opinion, the latter is more likely. When the eight empires attack, the Vermilion Bird Empire will stand on the right of reason when they strike back. In the Vermilion Bird Empire's history, the royal family has had some conflicts with the Seven Empires, and now even the heavenly ruler Seal Empire is being a disloyal dog. As a result, the Vermilion Bird Empire can be said to be surrounded by enemies right now, but this is also a large opportunity for them. As for whether it is actually danger or opportunity, it depends on the Empire's true power. If they have power, they'll be consuming a big meat bun. But if they don't have power, they'll be crushed to death by that meat bun. Are you saying that this was all arranged? No, there's no way. There's no way to fade our true power, is there? Fool, you lost to the other side because you lack combat experience. But at the same time, all of you have a seal in your bodies, said Long Chen in Reed. Calm, impossible. If there was a seal, we would know. Yu Kaiyang Su's eyes widened. It's up to you whether you want to believe it or not. Long Chen shrugged indifferently. Just how immense was Long Chen's combat experience? His vision had been trained from the mortal world to the immortal world. Although he hadn't sensed anything at first, but when the seventh prince fought, he finally noticed something wrong. Back then, no matter how these princes and princesses fought with their lives on the line, they were unable to trigger the energy deep within their bodies, which made zero sense. When facing death, people would instinctively trigger their latent potential. But afterward, they would enter an extremely weak state. That was also called overdrafting oneself. However, they were unable to fight back or trigger it at potential. This seal might be able to trick others, but it couldn't hide from Long Chen. If what you're saying is true, that would be great. 
we'd show the eight empires that our vermilion bird empire's royal family isn't full of fools. Yu Kainksu was excited at the thought. The eight empires had started calling Yu Zioyan the fool lately due to how explosive his temper was and his inability to deal with problems. They were intentionally slandering him to lower the morale of the people of the Vermilion Bird Empire. No, you're wrong. The emperor really is a fool. The smart ones are his two empresses. Long Chen waved his hand dismissively. He refused to acknowledge that this plan had anything to do with Yu Zioyan. Yu Zioyan was a prime model of someone who acted without thinking, only able to be direct and straightforward. Thus, this kind of scheme was not his style. Yu Kaiengsu was speechless. Perhaps the only person in the Vermilion Bird Empire who dared to speak about the emperor like this was this fellow. However, after witnessing Long Chen blowing up an expert of the Heavenly Ruler Seal Empire with a punch and capturing the peak Heavenly Genius Wang Tianyao in front of the Earth Venerates, she now felt such admiration for Long Chen that it was bordering on worship. The two of them then returned to the princess mansion. The next morning, someone came to give Long Chen a status plate, and he knew it was time to report to the Philosopher Institute. TCH, they want me to play the bad guy. Fine, for my wife, I'll accept it. Long Chen took the status plate and went to the Philosopher Institute alone. The Philosopher Institute was the highest institute of learning in the Vermilion Bird Empire. In it, there were only a total of three philosophers, the ones with the greatest learning in the entire empire. Philosopher Sun, also known as Sun Gongjai, was one of them. When Long Chen arrived at the gate, he saw the board with the name of this place written on it. When he saw it, he couldn't help being moved. The words were written squarely, and although Long Chen was not skilled in calligraphy, just from seeing the writing of the characters, Long Chen could sense the overflowing righteousness from the person who had written it. This place is said to be the highest institute of learning in the empire, but it is actually a dirty swamp for the corrupt. How vile! The only question is whether you will still be standing here tomorrow. Perhaps the answer to that question depends entirely on a single word from Senior. Just then, an ancient voice rang out from the other side of the gate. Inri, Com Chapter 3993, made into a scapegoat, a white-haired lean elder appeared on the other side of the gate. This elder was not a cultivator, and yet he gave off a feeling of being close to the heavenly Tao's. Every single one of his movements was in accordance with the heavenly Tao's, which made others feel naturally comfortable when looking at him. This was Long Chen's first time seeing such a person, so he couldn't help feeling admiration. He then cupped his fists toward the elder. Junior Long Chen greets Senior. May I know Senior's name? You are too courteous. I don't dare to be called Senior. Learning is a limitless realm, and you have far more learning than anyone in our Philosopher Institute. You have such extensive stores of knowledge that we cannot keep up. As for myself, I am merely one of the Philosopher Institute's three philosophers surnamed Yang, with the given name Zikian. Greetings, Imperial Envoy. The elder bowed as befitting a scholar. Senior is too modest. Your gaze is pure like water, without the slightest ripple like a mirror. I feel great admiration when looking at you. On the other hand, that philosopher's son is so arrogant that he acts like he is omniscient. It's very dislikable. Before coming here, I thought that the Philosopher Institute was a mass of corruption from top to bottom, but now I see that my understanding is still shallow. It shouldn't be completely wiped out said Long Chen. Imperial envoy, I am not worthy of such praise. There is no way for me to shed responsibility for the Philosopher Institute's corruption. Also, there is a deeper meaning in the Vermilion Bird Empire's generous support of the Philosopher Institute. It is the so-called when you use copper as a mirror, you can tidy your clothes. When you use history as a mirror, 
you can understand the rise and falls when you use humans as a mirror you can understand gains and losses the vermilion bird empire's philosopher institute uses culture and learning as the mirror while martial arts are the reflection together they illuminate the path forward thus when the mirror is clean one can see oneself clearly one can avoid getting lost in fantasy and one can follow their path forward without being dyed by the darkness of the world the philosopher sect is exactly a mirror for the cultivators of the vermilion bird empire but right now the mirror is covered in too many stains so many stains have accumulated that we cannot be the mirror that the vermilion bird empire needs sighed the elder long chen instantly understood it seemed that this elder was aware of everything were things not as simple as they appeared to be if the mirror is stained then you should clean it no asked long chen with a smile of course however when you say wipe it clean to what extent are you intending the elder responded with another question until there is not even a single speck of dust left said long chen decisively but then what the mirror is still a mirror as long as you use it more dust will fall on it probed the elder long chen looked at him only after you wipe the mirror clean will you realize that the mirror is no longer the old mirror the vermilion bird empire wants a mirror that can reflect people if there is no problem with the mirror itself it can be used after the dust is wiped away however if the mirror's core has been damaged by the stains it's not something that can be saved just by wiping it then i would say that the vermilion bird empire should consider getting a new mirror what do you think the elder grew solemn can you not give them a chance people are not saints who doesn't make mistakes sorry but people don't give chances chances are things to be strived for yourself what the philosopher institute has been doing for the past few years is completely known to his majesty i trust that senior is also aware an empire has its own laws and a family has its own rules this time the mistakes that they've made must be paid for by themselves however if the mirror is still that mirror i will consider putting a cloth over the mirror before wiping it clean that is my greatest concession said long chen long chen was well aware of the philosopher institute's role in instigating friction within the empire in recent years but the royal family had endured it this restraint caused this group of self-important book readers to start thinking that they were not bound by the empire's laws feeling emboldened they began to criticize the royal family and mock martial artists to make matters worse as they continued their tirade against the authorities they willingly became pawns for other empires without a second thought long chen understood that there were individuals within the philosopher institute who had been bribed by rival empires to sow discord and disrupt the progress of the vermilion bird empire at first long chen didn't understand why the vermilion bird empire would endure this group of idiots however after the state banquet long chen understood it seemed that it was all for others to see and read come the vermilion bird empire had endured for years and was no longer planning on enduring they were starting to show their fangs and their first step was to clean up this group of arrogant idiots when long chen said that he would let them cover the mirror with a cloth before wiping it clean he was saying that he would allow the philosopher institute to clean itself if they made long chen do it personally then the philosopher institute would no longer need to exist the elder was silent for a long time and long chen also didn't say anything further simply standing there expressionlessly waiting for the elder's response finally the elder helplessly sighed imperial envoy please report to his majesty that i will personally clean up the philosopher institute i will give his majesty a satisfactory answer long chen nodded without saying anything further he turned and left he knew that yu xiaoyan had sent him in order to make sure 
that the elder didn't try to bargain with him. Long Chen's arrival meant that the elder had no room to haggle. To put it frankly, the emperor was using Long Chen as the villain. After this matter, the Philosopher Institute would still be the Philosopher Institute, and the emperor would still be the wise and benevolent emperor. This was the work that could only be done by an outsider. Long Chen had just barely left the Philosopher Institute when the news spread and shook the entire Vermilion Bird Empire. The Philosopher Institute was conducting a strict investigation of itself. Even Philosopher's son was implicated and was thrown into prison. However, the most shocking thing was that the majority of scholars in the Philosopher Institute had carried out actions that betrayed the empire. They had received bribes from other empires to spread negative views in order to shake the foundation of the empire. It was almost unbelievable how many people were implicated. Even the highest level of the institute could not escape this investigation. Of all the Hanlin scholars, the scholars with the greatest learning in the Philosopher Institute, almost 90% had abused their position for personal gain. Also, that pudgy, pale Hanlin scholar that had previously clashed with Long Chen was captured and questioned via torture, causing him to expose a whole ring of black hands behind the scenes. Because of the severity of the case this time, the Philosopher Institute's discipline did not simply follow the rules of the Philosopher Institute. No, they used the law of the empire to punish the traitors. As a result, countless crying, wailing scholars who had once been glorious existences met their end on the execution stands. Apart from those who had committed treason, numerous other scholars had also engaged in unscrupulous activities. Driven by their desire to outshine their peers, they resorted to harming their fellow scholars. In fact, they had done more sinister things than what cultivators would do against each other. For instance, there was one scholar who poisoned an entire family merely to claim a concubine. Another disturbing incident involved a conflict arising from a single argument, during which these scholars abused their positions to kill the other side. When these treacherous acts were brought to light, even the cultivators themselves were chilled to the bone. These people had displayed a level of ruthlessness that surpassed even the most fearsome cultivators. It was then that everyone realized a profound truth. A bloody blade, though terrifying, paled in comparison to the invisible blade the ability to kill without shedding a drop of blood. The executions lasted seven days. In the end, hundreds of thousands of scholars were executed and millions were banished into the wilderness. Although they weren't punished with the death sentence, based on the punishment for commoners after being banished, there was almost no chance of survival. Thus, it was no different from execution. Only some people with lighter crimes were imprisoned. In an instant, the Philosopher Institute's cleansing washed away 90% of its scholars, shaking the entire Vermilion Bird Empire. It also entered the annals of history. This bloody cleansing was written in history as having been caused by a black-robed person called Long Chen. When Long Chen heard that news, he almost spat out blood. Why were they turning him into the scapegoat? Just as Long Chen was about to demand justice from the emperor, the emperor actually took the initiative to send an imperial edict for Long Chen to come to his palace. In Read Khan Chapter 3994, the strongest trial by fire when Long Chen entered the palace and was preparing to argue with Yu Xiaoyan, he found that the emperor wasn't present. As if knowing that Long Chen would be displeased, the ones to appear before him were the two empresses. Seeing them, Long Chen didn't know whether to laugh or cry. No matter how angry he was, he couldn't cast his anger on his two mothers-in-law. Jiang Huixin smiled. Long Chen, don't be angry. Sometimes suffering is a blessing. The Philosopher Institute is a mirror that the Vermilion Bird Empire uses to see themselves clearly, so there is not supposed to be a subordinate relationship between them. 
as we have to maintain the philosopher institute's special position in the empire history cannot be written so directly but don't be angry good things will quickly come however before that i want to ask you a few questions if war breaks out would you be willing to fight for the vermilion bird empire i am answered long chen without hesitation what if it weren't for king Shuen? then i wouldn't long chen shook his head for king Shuen, you are willing to fight all out what if at the end his majesty still doesn't agree to your marriage then what will you do asked zhu langson i'll take her if i can take con if i can con swindle if i can swindle in any case i'll use everything i can king Shuen will be mine in the end said long chen confidently isn't that a bit too shameless said zhu langson while covering up her smile for king Shuen, i am willing to even lose my life so who cares about some face said long chen indifferently long chen was actually able to say such scoundrel words so righteously causing even jang huixin to laugh all right this time we called you over to give you your compensation we won't make you a scapegoat for nothing the vermilion bird sacrificial altar is about to open you and king Shuen, along with all the disciples of the royal bloodline will enter the vermilion bird space to cultivate this is the strongest trial by fire we have and it is unimaginably beneficial to both the physical body and one's flame energy furthermore there are also special trials inside the vermilion bird space one of them being the heroic spirit of the immemorial vermilion bird that can be your training partner although you are not an imperial disciple with the royal bloodline we can see that your physical body is in the midst of rapidly growing so that place would be the best spot for you to train before long chen could reply a bunch of rooms already lit up beneath his feet and space twisted the next moment he appeared in front of a giant spatial gate this spatial gate exuded a sacred aura as it was condensed from flames as a result an ordinary person would be struck dumb with terror when they saw this gate long chen long chen had just arrived when he heard yu king Shuen's delighted cry so he turned to see that she was right behind him but they weren't alone here ju yifeng ju yunwen yu kaiing su and the other princes and princesses were also present along with hundreds of thousands of experts behind them to long chen's surprise these hundreds of thousands of experts were all supremes with dense flame energy since when did the royal family possess this many powerful disciples as expected the vermilion bird empire had been concealing their true power you really did come that's great i thought that my imperial father wouldn't let you yu king Shuen came over to long chen staring at him excitedly i helped him by being a scapegoat if he didn't give me some compensation i'd have to announce the truth to the world chortled long chen now he no longer minded being a scapegoat chu yunwen and the others also came to greet long chen their previous encounter with long chen had left a lasting impression causing them to see him as a goal to aspire to rather than a rival to compete against in that instant the runes on the spatial gate began to tremble causing a resounding rumble to fill the air as if in response a dazzling burst of divine light erupted from the gate illuminating the surroundings with its brilliance the vermilion bird space is open everyone enter announced zhu yunwen long chen nodded indicating for zhu yunwen to go first after all the latter was a crown prince and this was his territory as a guest it was inappropriate for long chen to go in first on the other hand ju yunwen tried to get long chen to go in first several times but seeing that long chen still refused he then led everyone inside buzz the fabric of space quivered revealing a long flame channel with the vibrant flames coiling around its length as they approached 
a faint yet haunting cry of an ancient bird resonated through their very souls sending shivers down their spines when that bird cry appeared every one in the passageway was shaken in an instant flames surged around them automatically protecting their bodies long chen are you all right yu king shuan looked at long chen worriedly i'm fine what is it long chen looked at her curiously not sensing anything but every one including yu king shuan had summoned flames around them as protection this is the immemorial vermilion bird cry and it contains immense sacred power you should know that outsiders can't even get in here even us with the royal bloodline the gli bloodline suffer under immense pressure to pass through here so i was worried that you would be injured yu king shuan relaxed when she saw that long chen was fine what they didn't know was that when long chen followed them into the passageway yu xiaoyan jang huixin and zhu langxin were right behind them the moment long chen was in danger they would pull him out of the passageway on the other side of the spatial gate they watched as long chen and the others walked to the end of the passageway seeing nothing occur they sank into thought long chen has reached the end of the passageway but no matter how powerful his physical body soul and will or how can he not sense anything at all wondered zhu langson when the two of them proposed for long chen to enter the vermilion bird space yu xiaoyan had rejected them as the secret space was not suitable for outsiders to enter however jang huixin and zhu langson did not view long chen as an outsider after the two of them nagged him about it yu xiaoyan finally assented but there was a condition if long chen faced a powerful rejection which yu xiaoyan expected to occur they would immediately drag him out originally they had all thought that he would face a certain amount of rejection from this space but as long as he could endure it he would be able to get through that would be a huge opportunity for him to their astonishment long chen remained completely unaffected by the powerful presence emanating from the vermilion birds sacred bird cry as a result the three of them simply stared at each other in dumbfounded silence boom just then the spatial gate slammed shut and two vermilion bird marks appeared manifesting into two clumps of flames in the form of the yin yang fish as they revolved around each other countless stars condensed into specks of light on the spatial gate suddenly they heard a clear clacking sound as the spatial gate went from illusory to solid it was a giant gate hanging against the dome of the heavens so big that even yu xiaoyan and the others appeared tiny in front of it when they saw this gate their expressions changed as they were filled with the disbelief the strongest trial by fire the double bird heaven earth lock in read come chapter three thousand nine hundred ninety five heaven and earth switch places how can this be when yu xiaoyan and his two empresses saw the double bird seal and the giant starry diagram all of their expressions changed it seems that the heavens have changed the legendary strongest trial by fire has appeared just then an elder silently appeared behind the three of them when the three of them saw that elder they hastily bowed greetings patriarch this elder was precisely the elder who had scolded yu xiaoyan for losing his temper he was also the one who had explained the process of proposing to a princess to long chen in the palace yu xiaoyan was the monarch while he was an official but here the roles were reversed it was yu xiaoyan who acted as if he was the junior it seems that everything is up to fate declared the elder solemnly as he eyed the double bird heaven earth seal diagram patriarch what do you think about it asked yu xiaoyan do you remember the double bird manifestation that appeared in the nine heavens above the capital asked the elder of course the entire capital's grand formation lost effect when it resonated with it 
the master astronomer stated that it was an auspicious sign from the heavens that it signified the rise of the vermilion bird empire said you Zioan. i investigated it later the manifestation appeared at the exact same time as when long chen set foot into the vermilion bird's territory said the elder that that has to be a coincidence right what relationship does long chen have with my vermilion bird empire asked you Zioan. the elder didn't directly reply and just looked at the gate instead the vermilion bird trials have thirteen levels the first level is the easiest while the thirteenth is the hardest you're the person with the greatest talent in the recent era the only one capable of comparing to those immemorial heavenly geniuses back when you underwent this trial you managed to activate the tenth level trial divine flames refine the sun and moon however the sun moon divine flames the squeezing of yin and yang did they not almost take your lives back then upon hearing this you Zioan and the others expressions changed thinking back it really had been dangerous for them back then you Zioan said back then i managed to break through ten gates in a row every single one of them being incredibly dangerous the tenth one in particular i barely survived patriarch yunwen and the others might be talented but compared to Zioan they are still lacking how could they have activated the most difficult trial won't all of them end up sealed inside like this asked zu langsim worriedly this trial by fire could not be escaped if you could not open the gate yourself once the gate was sealed it had to be opened from the inside back then the three of them had attended this trial and had used up all their power just to escape they had gone in with ninety thousand people but only thirty thousand managed to come out the rest died inside that time they had only activated the tenth level trial but long chen and the others now had to face the strongest thirteenth level trial with an unimaginable danger level i don't think it is the thirteenth trial sighed the elder as he examined the marking on the gate it's not impossible that is clearly the double bird heaven earth lock exclaimed yu Zioan. the elder turned to yu Zioan and shook his head even after so many years your head remains so foolish but even if your head is foolish you should at least use your eyes take a look at the diagram is there any difference compared to the records there's no difference you Zioan stared at the diagram for a long time without noticing anything special about it. Uh, Jiang Huixin suddenly cried out. With an inconceivable expression, she pointed at the diagram. It's not the double bird heaven earth lock. The double bird heaven earth lock's immemorial vermilion birds were split into two colors, yin and yang. According to the records, the earth bird was on top but here the earth bird is on the bottom the two vermilion birds in the diagram were identical and the only difference was their color they represented heaven and earth but they were actually reversed now the heaven is yang male the earth is yin female the immemorial vermilion bird race was always led by matriarchs that's why the earth bird was always on top but this time Jiang Huixin was bewildered. When Jiang Huixin said this, Yu Zioan's expression also changed, and he turned to the elder. The latter only shook his head. It's too strange. When Long Chen arrived, the double bird manifestation appeared over the capital. No one paid attention to the position of the two birds at that time, though. But now the double bird heaven earth lock has also appeared, and it is different whether it is a blessing or a calamity no one can say for sure but normally when heaven and earth are reversed it is an omen of great misfortune which indicates the appearance of mountains of corpses and rivers of blood we have to be prepared jiangsin mobilize all the experts in the various secret realms bring out all your preparations for war yes 
Patriarch, answered Jiang Hewixin. You should all leave. Make your preparations, said the elder. But without them, said Zhu Lengxin. According to their plan, once the princes and princesses passed through this trial by fire, they would be sent to the various battlefields, and that would be their true trial, the true test to see who would be the future emperor. It was a truly fair test. Also, the Vermilion Bird Empire had been secretly raising experts for countless years, and their army was only something that they displayed on the surface, a fake to deceive their enemies. Meanwhile, their true power lay hidden. When the Philosopher Institute started meddling with the Vermilion Bird Empire, creating all kinds of conflicts inside, a few so-called scholars thought themselves wise. It was as if they didn't express their dissatisfaction with reality. They would be unable to show the world just how much wiser they were. Later on, more and more of these so-called scholars appeared, along with more trolls. Some of them truly were dissatisfied with reality, while the majority were simply mouth clackers who repeated whatever others said. As for the elite mouth clackers, they were the ones paid to disseminate rumors and falsehoods. After all, starting rumors was easy, but refuting them was hard. Many people liked to believe whatever they wanted to believe. Even if there was proof that it was false, they still refused to believe in reality. On the surface, the empire was filled with a cloud of falsehoods. However, that smoke was something that the empire intentionally showed others. Now, though, there was no need to keep up the act. Thus, Yu Ziyuan's first step was to make Long Chen the villain and eliminate the largest group of trolls, purging the spies and traitors to clean up the empire's atmosphere. The eight empires had to be secretly preparing as well. The fact that the Vermilion Bird Empire had purged the Philosopher Institute was proof that they were aware of the eight empires' plot. Hence, they had to move on to the next phase of their plans. Right now, they were all in a race against time. The Vermilion Bird trial by fire had been opened, and according to the plan, they should have all come out before the war started. They would then lead the Vermilion Bird Empire into victory, defending their own positions and dignity. However, plans were unable to keep up with the changes of the time. The double bird heaven earthlock trial had appeared, so their plans were forced to change. Time does not wait for us, so we must be double prepared. If they do not come out in time and we just wait, we'll have wasted the golden opportunity, said the elder. The three of them nodded and left to prepare, leaving behind only the elder in front of the spatial gate. The elder looked at the double bird diagram and sighed. All you saw was the vermilion birds switching places. But you didn't see that the starlight in the heavens was no longer starlight but actual stars. This heaven and earth probably no longer refers to just the vermilion bird race. This little fellow Long Chen, just what kind of background does he have? The elder stared at it for a long time before silently leaving leaving behind that strange spatial gate with countless flickering stars on it. When the elder left, these stars slowly took the form of a mysterious diagram. It was a human-shaped diagram, but it slowly scattered and returned to its original appearance without anyone ever seeing it. In read, Com Chapter 3996, Borrowing Power to Refine the Spirit Boom, after Long Chen and the others walked out of the passageway, the entrance suddenly slammed shut behind them. The spatial gate, through which they had arrived, vanished, leaving them stranded in a world enveloped by raging flames. Upon arriving, Long Chen's body tightened under the immense pressure, as if a colossal mountain was crushing him. The overwhelming force caused countless people to collapse, their bodies quivering in agony as the terrifying pressure threatened to break their bones and shatter them to pieces. On the other hand, Yu Qingxuan was just a bit red, but she was able to endure. Seeing this, Long Chen pulled her behind him, and she instantly felt better. Long Chen then 
looked at the sky. There were thin cracks in the void, stretching behind the horizon. It was as if the world was assembled after those cracks appeared. One dragon power. How can that be? When my imperial father entered, it was only half a dragon power, exclaimed Zhu Yunwen. What is going on? asked Long Chen. The vermilion bird space has a gravity domain that exudes immense pressure. The passageway was just a buffer to get us here, so the gravity wasn't as bad there. But now, right at the start, the pressure is equivalent to one dragon power, about twice as strong as my imperial father's trial. Also, the strength of the pressure is based on the potential of the person undergoing the trial. Can it be that our batch of people is even stronger than when my imperial father entered? Ju Yunwen was bewildered. Is it because we have too many people? There are at least 800,000 people here, guessed Ju Yifen. Ju Yunwen shook his head. No, it is based on the person with the greatest potential in the group. Just then, quite a few of the imperial disciples couldn't endure it and a more and hacked up blood. The immense pressure threatened to crush them into pulp. Join forces to summon a flame domain, shouted Ju Yunwen. In an instant, all the princes and princesses formed hand seals, summoning a giant flame barrier. However, when this barrier appeared, the space around them rumbled and their expressions changed. The moment this barrier formed, the pressure on them increased. It was like they had suddenly opened an umbrella under a waterfall, and the barrier collapsed. Due to the backlash, all the princes and princesses coughed up blood. How can this be? If this continues, they'll all die, said Yu Qingxuan frantically. These imperial disciples were incapable of enduring this terrifying pressure, so they collapsed one after another. Some people even began to lose consciousness. If this continued, they would really be crushed to death. Suddenly, a figure walked into the sky, lessening the pressure on everyone. Long Chen. Yu Qingxuan was delighted. As Long Chen was standing in the sky above them, a transparent dome appeared above his head, containing countless transparent rooms. That was the power of the laws of this vermilion bird space. When Long Chen stood above everyone, those runes focused on him, and due to the high concentration, the runes ended up forming a dome around him. Only then did people realize that this terrifying gravity was caused by these invisible runes. Thankfully, the dome that Long Chen made was big enough, around 300 meters wide. Within this area, the pressure weakened significantly. Seeing that, Zhu Yunwen and the others hastily dragged the unconscious disciples in, allowing them the chance to recuperate. However, too many people had collapsed, so there was not enough space. Just as everyone started to panic, Long Chen walked three more steps into the sky. With every step, the void would unleash explosive rumbling, and by the third step, Cracks appeared all over the sky as if he had stepped onto thin ice and would fall through at any moment. This is my limit, called out Long Chen. After all, he was not just enduring unimaginable gravitational pressure, but also had to worry about the space beneath his feet. Any further, and the space beneath his feet would collapse. If that happened, he didn't know just how many people would die. However, with those three steps, he rose hundreds of meters up, and the dome around him had gone from a few feet thick to hundreds of meters. The immense pressure made even Long Chen have trouble breathing. It was like there was a giant umbrella above his head now, as he had created a safe domain over 3,000 meters wide. It's enough, it's enough. Brother Long, you must endure. Du Yunwen shouted as he brought the unconscious disciples over. However, as other disciples tried to enter, Ju Yunwen scolded them. What are you doing? This is a trial by fire, not somewhere to run off. If you can endure, then endure it. Try to acclimate yourselves to this space as quickly as possible. What do you think this pressure is? 
it is the divine radiance of the immemorial vermilion bird it can rapidly increase the power of your physical body as long as you constantly resist its pressure it will stimulate the potential of your body allowing you to benefit endlessly take advantage of while brother long can still endure to get a breather you have to cherish this opportunity ju yunwen was truly worthy of being the crown prince he was more mature than the others acting more steadily and unflustered also he thought things through more than the others after all the princes and princesses were stronger than the other imperial disciples so the pressure was unable to pose much of a threat to them being in a position of power over the others they had a duty to protect the others the unconscious disciples quickly woke up without needing any direction they left long chen's protection to continue receiving the baptism of the immense pressure at the same time they helped each other dragging people back under cover when they fell unconscious long chen how are you doing asked yu king shuen worried that long chen wouldn't be able to last much longer under this pressure i don't think i can last much longer at most at most long chen's voice quivered as if he was about to fall hearing that everyone was horrified but he then continued at most i can last until the sixth month of next year long chen then laughed as a result yu king shuen was enraged but also wanted to laugh in this tense scenario he was still in the mood to joke around they really had been scared just now what they didn't know was that as long chen held off this immense pressure there was also an endless flow of energy entering his body his blood kai and bones were like dry riverbeds soaking in rain so his strength was constantly climbing this place was practically a treasure land he had never imagined that the pressure here would be able to bring him so many benefits several hours passed the imperial disciples after constantly taking breaks and switching out were finally accustomed to this space although it wasn't to the point where they could last forever they would no longer be crushed in just a short moment seeing that everyone was starting to acclimate themselves long chen didn't need to wait any longer forming hand seals a miniature figure of himself came out of his head that was his you in spirit today i'll borrow the power here to undergo the fourth step of the dragon soul body forging art refining the spirit in read com chapter three thousand nine hundred ninety seven cruel rules after long chen summoned his yuan spirit the power of his blood bones and kai flowed into it causing gold spots to appear on his yuan spirit those golden spots then gradually formed into primitive runes however an instant's sticks worth of time later long chen was no longer able to endure just as he had predicted the pain of refining the spirit could not be compared to refining the body there was a qualitative difference between them long chen's ability to endure bone forging in one go should not be mistaken as an indication that he could undergo full spirit forging in a similar manner if he attempted it regardless of its feasibility the excruciating pain would undoubtedly shatter long chen's mind driving him to the brink of madness as expected after an instant's sticks worth of time his forehead was already covered in sweat and he felt weak and empty seeing this yu king shuen thought that long chen couldn't endure any longer so she joined forces with the others to take his place although they didn't have his immense power with dozens of them joining forces at once they could still summon a decent space over a hundred meters wide also with everyone getting acclimated to the pressure the space was enough to give them buffer room long chen didn't explain seeing that everyone was getting used to the pressure here he took a break to recover he then consumed a medicinal pill and continued the spirit forging process long chen repeated this process over and over again spirit forging and then resting after a while he was very surprised to see just how rapidly the imperial disciples grew 
their physical body strengthened so rapidly that they were fully accustomed to the pressure in just one day's time in other words every single person here had at least one dragon powers worth of strength and they could already be considered a powerful expert furthermore all these imperial disciples possessed powerful bloodlines and magical arts if they were to leave the trial by fire they would completely transform and possess shocking power the imperial family had truly hidden their power deeply I think how long are we going to stay here asked long chen after undergoing another session of spirit forging it's entirely up to us if we can pass through the entire thing we can leave however we are still on the first step of the first level it's the easiest simplest part but you also saw just how difficult it was for us our trial by fire will probably not be any inferior to my imperial father's trial and there will probably also be ten levels back then my imperial father and his batch of experts spent a full three months going from the first gate to the tenth gate we'll probably need even longer said ju yifend three months isn't that too long there will probably be major changes in the outside world during this time long chen couldn't help being surprised he could essentially guess what the imperial family's plot was they hadn't opened this trial earlier most likely to show the outside world the true power of their princes and princesses as they had seen it long chen estimated that it wouldn't be long before their armies came upon the border three months time that was too long by the time they came out it would be too late three months would be the fastest time other than my imperial father empress jiang and empress zhu there were many other powerful experts there just the double supremes alone numbered over five hundred on the other hand we only have fifty-six double supremes a tenth of that generation based on that calculation yu kyanks who walked over at this time also dripping with sweat and her face a bit pale just now she had followed long chen's example and cultivated through resisting the pressure are you saying that we'll need thirty months to pass exclaimed long chen yu kyanks wiped the sweat off of her face with a handkerchief and then shook her head it's not calculated like that if we are not strong enough we will simply die here and never come out what isn't this a trial by fire asked long chen the vermilion birds trial by fire is just this cruel if we cannot escape ourselves there is no way to open the gate from the other side moreover as long as someone remains inside the trial cannot be opened to new people so the people inside are like prisoners but this space also has its own laws after a hundred years it will automatically refresh itself at that time all life inside will be completely crushed said yu kyanksu damn that really is vicious sighed long chen however thinking about it it made sense if the people inside were unable to pass leaving new people unable to enter forever this place would essentially be garbage even so this rule was truly bloody it seemed that once you came to this place there was no longer any chance of retreat big brother i want to become an expert can you help me asked zhu yifeng suddenly hearing this yu kyanksu and long chen were both startled after his last defeat zhu yifeng had become unusually silent no one knew what he was thinking however seeing him clenching his teeth long chen knew that he had made his decision his gaze was bright long chen then looked at his gaze and smiled no problem i will help you but you will need to work like your life is on the line because it is big brother don't worry i will no longer let myself waste away i will become an expert Ju Yifen rose and walked somewhere with even greater pressure. This space was a pathway that stretched far into the distance, 
but the twisted space here made it so that they couldn't see that far. They were unable to see what the end of the path would look like. However, the further they went on this path, the greater the pressure grew. As a result, the ordinary disciples were still in the original location, while the more powerful ones were going deeper. Will he be all right? Asked Yu Kaiyang Su worriedly. He will be fine. But you might not be, said Long Chen. Why not? Asked Yu Kaiyang Su in confusion in Reed Kam because he will quickly surpass you. Long Chen smiled. I don't believe you. Long Chen said, he has found his determination to get stronger. But as for you, I have always worked hard to get stronger. All right. Up to you. You can just pretend that I didn't say anything. Just wait and see. Long Chen rose and also went deeper. Three thousand meters ahead was a step. When Long Chen took that step, the pressure instantly grew. Based on his senses, the pressure here was equivalent to ten dragon power. Continuing onward, he saw Yu Qingxuan and the other princes and princesses, as well as the more powerful imperial disciples, working hard on getting used to the pressure here. Long Chen didn't disturb their cultivation. After another three thousand meters, he saw the next step, and his foot stepped onto it. In read, Com Chapter 3998, The Second Gate Buzz. Long Chen's body got a bit heavier. However, sensing that it was about twenty dragon power, Long Chen was at ease. His main worry had been that this next step would rise to a thousand dragon power. If that was the case, let alone the others, even he wouldn't be able to cross the step. Moreover, no one knew just how many more steps there were. Fortunately, twenty dragon power was nothing to Long Chen. But as he continued onward, more and more steps appeared, and every step increased the pressure by ten dragon power. After nine steps, the pressure was already at ninety dragon power, and even Long Chen found it a bit taxing. After all, walking under such constant pressure was extremely tiring. Even though Long Chen's total power was over five hundred dragon power, walking in the space still caused his whole body to turn a bit numb, as if his power was being stripped away from him. Thus, it was with great difficulty that he reached the tenth step, where the pressure increased to a hundred dragon power. There, he started to pant before he saw a large gate before him. That should be the gate to the next level. Fuck no good. I have to go back and rest. The pressure here was so great that even breathing became difficult, so he started to retreat. Once he reached the region with fifty dragon power, he finally felt better. That uncomfortable feeling gradually faded. When he returned to the ten dragon power region, there was no one there. Everyone had returned to where they had first entered to rest. Big brother, did you go to the next step? Ju Yifeng immediately ran over excitedly when Long Chen returned. Yu Qingxuan, Yu Kaingxu, Zhu Yunwen, and the other princes and princesses also surrounded him. Ten dragon power was their limit, so they didn't dare to go to the next region. They could only ask Long Chen about the next region. Long Chen solemnly told them, I will tell you some bad news. By the tenth step, the pressure is one hundred dragon power. This is probably a terrifyingly difficult trial for everyone. Everyone was shocked. With disbelief, Zhu Yifen asked, Big Brother, you. You've already gone to the tenth step? Long Chen nodded. I arrived in front of the gate, but the pressure was too great. Even I had trouble with it. This is not good. Seeing everyone's dismay, Zhu Yunwen said, Brother Long, you're incredibly powerful. After the sixth step, it isn't just pressure, but also a powerful resistance. It normally requires everyone to resist it, as this is a kind of collective trial against all of us. But you managed to reach the tenth step on your own. The pressure alone is one hundred dragon power, but for you to do it on your own. 
the resistance is probably closer to a thousand dragon power. Everyone stared at Long Chen in shock. If others had said such a thing, they would refuse to believe it even if they were beaten to death. Just how much power would that require? Last time, Long Chen's absolute limit had only been over five hundred dragon power. Had he been holding back? Hearing this, Long Chen slapped his leg. So that's what it was. No wonder I felt so much resistance. Just walking was so taxing that I almost couldn't breathe. Big brother, you're amazing. Chu Yifeng gazed at him worshipfully. On the other hand, the other princes and princesses stared at him like he was a monster. Only Yu Qingxuan had a sweet smile from the start, her beautiful eyes filled with pride. Of everyone here, only she knew just how powerful Long Chen was. No matter what kind of difficult environment they were in, as long as he was present, everything would be manageable. He gave her a sense of security. If that's the case, we should pick up the pace. Once the eight empires' diplomats get back, they'll immediately start gathering their armies. And the moment they finish discussing their strategy, they will attack the Vermilion Bird Empire with their full power. The probing that they did during the state banquet was to test out our power. However, once the war starts, it won't be probing any more but a thunderous slaughter. All of us are the main characters of this era, so this war to protect the Empire cannot be missing us. Brothers and sisters, this war is no game. It is cruel and bloody, to the point that it surpasses your imagination. Thus, we don't have that much time to rest. You should consider this trial as a battlefield in its own way. With every bit of time we waste, more lives are lost. Just imagine your fathers, your mothers, and all your elders joining forces right now on the battle lines. What awaits them is the enemy aiming to kill them. Tell me, what should you be doing right now? Long Chen's gaze swept over the imperial disciples, his voice heavy. Long Chen's words were infectious, inspiring the crowd. They could practically see their family standing on the battleground, dressed in battle armor, taking out their dusty weapons as they fought for time for them. In an instant, all the imperial disciples rose. Gritting their teeth, they went straight for the Ten Dragon Power region. After viewing this trial as a battlefield, their fear of it vanished. If they didn't fear dying, then there were no misgivings for them to have. As royal descendants, Du Yifeng and the others were meant to bear this responsibility. However, they actually needed an outsider like Long Chen to urge and spur them into action, causing them to be too ashamed to face him. Even an outsider like Long Chen saw further than them, seeing the crisis of the Vermilion Bird Empire. Meanwhile, they only saw the immense difficulty before them. Hence, all of them started pressing on deeper. King Shuen, be careful. Don't force yourself too hard, whispered Long Chen softly, holding her hand. Yu Qingxuan smiled at him. No, I will. I will become an expert like big sister Meng Kai, Cloud, and Minjiu. I will also possess the power to protect you. Seeing that smile, Long Chen was lost for a moment. Her words shook him more than any pledge of undying love, causing him to just stand there for a long time. By the time he recovered, Yu Keng Chuen was already pressing on toward the next step. Long Chen rested a bit. After reaching his peak condition, he once more continued onward. Long Chen saw that all the Imperial Disciples had reached the Ten Dragon Power region, and a small portion had entered the Twenty Dragon Power region. As for the princes and princesses, they had all reached the Thirty Dragon Power region. Long Chen's words had given them a sense of crisis, so they truly started, unleashing their full power, excavating their potential. As they did so, they felt a strange power flow inside their bodies, a power that they had not sensed before. It was like some kind of seal inside of their bodies was slowly coming loose. Long Chen then reached the tenth step, 
which was right in front of the gate. He was about to summon his Ewan spirit to cultivate here when the dragon expert said, Don't just convince others to work hard. Give some pressure to yourself. Get in. In read, come if I go in, I can't come back. What about the others? Long Chen was startled. This is their family's training ground. Do you think that they could really die here? Back, when you held back the pressure for them, it was entirely superfluous. You actually held them back, preventing them from activating the vermilion bird divine seal. Stop wasting words and get in, demanded the dragon expert. Hearing this, Long Chen helplessly walked into the gate. However, when he stepped through, he let out a startled cry. His foot landed on nothing more than air, and he plummeted down. Bookmark this website in read, com to update the latest novels. Chapter 3999 Second Refinement Boom Long Chen smashed into the ground, the impact almost knocking him unconscious. At this moment, countless stars swirled round in his head as he felt the world spinning around him. Slowly, he managed to get back on his feet, feeling the aching pain in every bone of his body. The impact had left him feeling as though he had lost his cultivation base. Is it forbidden to stay in the air in this place? Long Chen sensed that the laws did not permit people to fly here, so he fell to the ground like a dog's stool. The impact left him with a broken lip, and he appeared wretched. Boom! Long Chen punched the ground, causing an explosive sound to ring out. What hard ground! What is it made of? Long Chen was startled as this punch only caused his fist to hurt, while the ground was completely undamaged. The pressure here was about the same as the outside, but there was also an altitude difference here. Thus, it was fortunate that it was Long Chen who had stepped through, or someone else would probably fall to their death. What Long Chen didn't know was that they were supposed to pass through the gate together, once everyone was on the stairs to the final gate, the laws would split the burden across all of them. It was a collective effort that the laws demanded. Hence, for Long Chen to walk out alone was heroic idealism, which was not a desirable trait for a nation's leader. If one person dared to barge through alone, they would be punished like him. Long Chen acclimated himself to this new place for a while, before deciding to refine his spirit. But the dragon expert stopped him just as he was about to start. Refine your blood, kai, and bones once more. Once all three have been refined a second time, you can start refining the spirit. It will give your Yuan spirit a boost. Can my blood, kai, and bones be refined again? Asked Long Chen, feeling pleasantly surprised. Do you need to ask? The dragon soul body forging art is my strongest technique. Did you think that it only had this little power? But when Long Chen started refining his blood again, the golden dragon blood flowed within his body. However, Long Chen found that the terrifying pressure around him caused it to flow sluggishly. This is a body refinement area and its laws will cause you to return to the most primal form of cultivation. For the current you, everything will become clumsy and awkward within this space while your various powers become stiff and slow. Cherish this opportunity well. These kinds of immemorial inheritances are very rare now. Cultivating here will be very beneficial to you, said the dragon expert. When Long Chen started refining his blood again, he found that his golden blood, which he thought he had refined to the limit, was igniting again. The surrounding pressure was actually helping him, causing his golden blood to temporarily congeal as if it had become true gold. Long Chen was overjoyed by this. The power of his essence blood crazily grew as he refined it. It began to flow faster and smoother within his body, causing him to sense his power rising rapidly. Just as the dragon expert said, such an opportunity was far too precious, so Long Chen cherished it properly. Six hours later, 
his golden blood finally started to cool off. Long Chen knew that the pressure here was not enough to keep igniting and refining it. However, he didn't go deeper. Instead, he used his blood to refine his kai and then utilized the power of both to refine his bones. When his bones reached their limit, he merged the power of all three to refine his spirit. Even then, refining the spirit was still too painful for him, so he still had to take breaks between sessions. Three days later, Long Chen heard a disturbance behind him. He saw Yu Qingxuan and the others appearing one by one. They had passed through the second gate. Yu Qingxuan's eyes reddened when she saw Long Chen. You bad person, you entered the second gate without saying anything. You don't even know how worried everyone was. Sorry, I was too curious. I wanted to take a look at what was behind the gate, but I ended up falling through. I couldn't go back. Long Chen apologized repeatedly. He knew that Yu Qingxuan had been worried about him. He definitely should have told them before entering. He had acted too brashly, without thinking about other people's feelings. Seeing Long Chen repeatedly apologize, Yu Qingxuan wiped away her tears. She really had been worried about Long Chen. Even though she knew that nothing would happen to him, she couldn't help worrying about him. By the time everyone passed through the second gate, the Imperial Disciples had activated the Vermilion Bird Divine Diagram, a natural formation that allowed them to resist the pressure together using the powerful bloodline resonance between them. Now, Long Chen could no longer detect any trace of panic or dismay that they had at the beginning. Long Chen asked them about it and learned that because Yu Qingxuan had been worried about Long Chen, they had barged through as quickly as they could, and under that terrifying pressure, their bloodline seal loosened, causing this bloodline resonance ability to awaken. I'm truly sorry to have made you all worry. Long Chen once more apologized to everyone, not having expected these imperial disciples to be like this. After all, over a hundred thousand of them were willing to risk their lives for him. He felt ashamed, but also moved by it. Rather long, you don't need to be so courteous. Since my imperial father let you attend this trial, it means that he doesn't view you as an outsider. We are one family. Furthermore, we'll probably need to rely on your support, said Zhu Yunwen graciously. He no longer had the arrogance from when they had first met. Now, he only felt sincere reverence for Long Chen. His power had completely won this crown prince over. Then I won't be pretentious. To tell the truth, the Empire's current situation is grim. War is about to break out, and I'm also in a rush. I hope that everyone can pass through the gate as quickly as possible. By entering here, I wanted to probe the path for everyone as soon as possible, said Long Chen. Long Chen could smell the coming of war. If the princes, princesses, and other elites of the imperial family were trapped here, the empire would be in danger. Hearing this, quite a few of the imperial disciples covered up their guilty expressions. In truth, when the crown prince brought everyone charging in, quite a few of them felt conflicted about it. However, if Long Chen had passed through in advance to scout for them, they would feel bad for having those contrary feelings. Once everyone was in, they did a simple readjustment to stay in their peak condition. They then activated their bloodline formation's power, which caused the pressure to fall on their bodies and let them become accustomed to this environment gradually. When the pressure reached the point of their bones creaking, their manifestations began to rumble and ignite in reed. Calm at the same time, their bloodline power began to rapidly climb. Sensing it, Ju Yifen and the others cried out in shock. The pressure here seemed about the same as before the gate, but it was several times more effective. Long Chen, I have a brazen idea, said Zhu Yunwen suddenly. As long as you dare to follow me, I will dare to lead. Long Chen smiled. He knew what Zhu Yunwen was thinking. Through multiple refinements, Long Chen's power had risen, 
so he wanted to know just what kind of pressure he would be able to endure now. Then we'll trouble Brother Long. Zhu Yunwen directly gathered all the imperial disciples, summoning their bloodline barrier once more. Long Chen then led them even deeper. They reached the second step of this region. When Long Chen stepped onto it, an immense pressure crashed down on him like a raging tsunami. Bookmark this website in read.com to update the latest novels. Chapter 4000 War Arrives When they stepped onto it, the direction of the pressure instantly changed. Previously, the pressure was coming from above. However, now that the pressure was actually coming from the front, Long Chen felt like he was trying to push through a flood. The change in direction caused his body to sway. However, he quickly stabilized his body. As for everyone behind him, they quickly adapted to it. With Long Chen at the front, he was receiving the greatest impact, so the pressure on them was lessened. Long Chen brought them 3,000 meters forward and saw the second step. When they stepped onto it, the pressure once more increased. Zhu Yunwen and the others had special tools for measuring the pressure here, so they measured it. This place had reached a pressure level of 120 dragon power. In other words, the pressure was increasing steadily just like before. However, now the pressure was not from above but directly against them, so it was even more difficult than the first level. By the time Long Chen brought them to the fifth step, most of them finally found it difficult to push any further. Their physical bodies were starting to feel like they were tearing apart. Thus, Long Chen had no choice but to stop. At the very front, he underwent more blood refinement. He found that after the pressure increased, he was able to effectively undergo further refinements. His dragon blood seemed to be able to grow without limit as long as he had enough pressure. When he was no longer able to refine it, it simply meant that the pressure was not enough, not that he had reached the limit. As a result, everyone paused to cultivate on the fifth step. Lal Chen was at the very front, while behind him were Zhu Yunwen, Yu Kaiyang Su, Zhu Yifen, Yu Qingxuan, and the other princes and princesses. Zhu Yunwen and the others were also under immense pressure. They were right behind Long Chen, creating a bigger safe space for the imperial disciples. As they spread out behind him, they further split the pressure that passed by Long Chen. It was only thanks to this that the imperial disciples were able to reach the fifth step. However, the pressure here was so great that the imperial disciples, as well as the princes and princesses, had reached their limit. Under this terrifying pressure, their power gradually revealed itself. A few previously unremarkable disciples were displaying a sharp light now. Amongst the imperial disciples, over 3,000 of them began to step forward, taking on greater pressure to lessen the burden on the ones behind them. Of course, this also benefited them. Long Chen continued to refine his blood, kai, and bones. In just a day, all three of them had once more reached the limit of this pressure. He then began refining his spirit again. It was still very painful, and Long Chen needed to rest after just an instant's sticks worth of time. After that, he continued to walk forward. After another day passed, more and more golden spots appeared on his Yuan spirit. However, he didn't sense it getting stronger, only feeling immense pain. If it weren't for the dragon expert being his guide, he might even think that he had done something wrong. Eventually, his Yuan spirit also reached the limit, and no further golden spots appeared. At this time, Long Chen noticed that Zhu Yifen and the others' auras were growing increasingly powerful. Their flame energy in particular was starting to give off terrifying fluctuations, exuding the will of the vermilion bird within them. Compared to when they had first entered, their auras were already much stronger, to the point where they seemed like completely different people. Long Chen had no choice but to sigh in wonder. The Vermilion Bird Empire's foundation was truly astonishing. This Vermilion Bird's trial 
by fire was most likely one of their hidden trump cards. At this moment, everyone had gotten accustomed to the pressure here. However, Long Chen had them stay where they were while he continued onward. With him gone, the pressure on them gradually rose. Fortunately, thanks to their improvements during this time, with their combined forces, they were able to endure the pressure. Seeing that, Long Chen went off alone and arrived at the sixth step. Here he finally found something different. This was a training ground with various kinds of equipment. It was just like the Imperial family's training grounds. However, the equipment here was far heavier. Long Chen found 100 Dragon Power Bracelets, 300 Dragon Power Arm Bracers, and 500 Dragon Power Leg Protectors. Long Chen equipped them, and his body instantly felt much heavier. However, he still hadn't reached his limit. Even 900 Dragon Power wasn't his limit, which meant that he was already far stronger than when he had tested himself in the Imperial family's training grounds. Long Chen then looked through the equipment and found that he was already wearing the heaviest bracelets, arm bracers, and leg protectors. Feeling helpless, Long Chen added a 100 Dragon Power belt and a 500 Dragon Power heart protector to his body. The heart protector went on his back, but due to how hard it was, it was like he was wearing a tortoise shell. It was very uncomfortable, but in order to reach his limit, he couldn't bother with how it felt. The weight on him was 1,500 dragon power, and only now did he start to feel difficult to walk. With this heavy equipment, he started walking forward, and the immense weight stimulated his body. His refinement of his blood, kai, and bones had reached a terrifying level, but that had not stimulated his flesh, meridians, tendons, and other parts of his body as profoundly. If they ended up mismatched in strength, he would be unable to unleash his power properly. Thus, he had to train them now. Long Chen unleashed some simple punches and kicks, and after a bit, his arms and legs already felt unbearably sore. He then continued after resting in reed. Palm, however, just as he predicted, this stimulation caused his power to rise at a shocking rate. In just a few hours, he could unleash thirty punches in one go. Although he was panting like a dog, his power was truly rising at an unbelievable rate. Senior, I should have about three thousand dragon power now, right? Asked Long Chen. Even three thousand dragon power is meaningless, said the dragon expert indifferently. Why? Asked Long Chen, feeling dumbfounded. Your path has changed from back then. Without completing the dragon soul body forging art, don't even think about researching a new seven star battle armor. Otherwise, you will die. Long Chen was startled. He was about to ask more questions when the dragon expert said, Don't waste your limited time on such meaningless questions. Long Chen helplessly continued to cultivate. A day later, everyone else reached the sixth step. People tried to use the equipment here, but they could only use the lightest ones. The heaviest piece that someone else picked was only fifty dragon power. Long Chen eventually brought them to a giant gate. Here, the pressure had reached two hundred dragon power. After that, they stopped and cultivated here for three days. It was on the third day that Yu Qingxuan's expression suddenly changed. She took out a cracked jade talisman. Not good. The war has already started. 